Um, are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Uh, yes, we've got a couple. Um, I had an agenda item for LCPC's offer of assistance with the road maintenance grants in aid program. Uh, that is for the program run in FY23. Uh, a letter of intent is available uh, for the FY24 uh, part of the program that's due on May 4th, I believe. What is the grant name again? Uh, the Municipal Road Grants and Aid Program. Is that different than what you had in your packet? It is. Uh, what was in the packet was um, LCPC's proposal for management assistance with the addition of the grant that's currently ongoing for FY23. So this new one would be FY24? Right. It's, do we want to continue to participate in the grants and aid program? And we just had to submit a letter of intent if we wish to. We don't have to make a specific project request or proposal. Just they calculate how much money each town gets based on the number of participants. So. This year we're getting more dialogues. Yeah. Couldn't imagine why we wouldn't want to, but. <clears throat> yeah, I think it'll be a short discussion. There, there's really no downside. <clears throat> okay. I have um, a couple also. Uh, Did you have more? I think the ones I had are the ones that you have. So uh, if you'd like to go ahead. Then. Um, so I, I noticed Brian did print out, thank you for doing that, the purpose statement for the rail trail um, yeah. as an action item. Um, and then there was a email from Doug Mulvey regarding an appointment to a t of a town representative to the LCPC Rail Trail Advisory Committee in my well so that's discussion marvin awards um is the up uh, um just make sure it's the same thing i'm thinking of Literally, I just lost it. I had it up. Uh, okay, sorry, I can't. Okay. Is it the same thing as the Green Mountain Byway? No, no. no. It was um, basically an LCPC version of the Rail Trail Committee, but they, I think, wanted an appointment from our Rail Trail Committee. Um, yeah. Or I think just from our community, but uh, I think it makes sense to go from our Rail Trail Committee. Yeah, my suggestion is going to be that the Rail Trail Committee make a recommendation to us. So. For that appointment. <clears throat> yep, I agree. Okay, there's also, I'm going to just add to that because I got this email today from Kyle News um, about the Green Mountain Byway Committee. Let me call it. This is the one I was just looking for. Um, but I'm just curious if anyone has information on it um, other than what I have in this email that I haven't consumed fully clearly. But let's add it to the committee section. Um, okay. Uh, what else do you have, Zanthin? Well, that's it. I did have an issue that I wanted to bring up under slip board issues and concerns, which okay. you can just do one right here. Is that everything you had, Brian? Uh, did we actually add the discussion about the, uh, not the rail trail appointment, but the rail trail purpose statement? Yes. Okay. If we got that, then I, I'm all set. Okay. Okay. Um, good. So reviewing orders and invoices. Do we have a printout, Rosemary, for each of us to look at or no? No. Okay, it's okay. 
Um, we'll just pass those around mm -hmm. as we go then. Um, and I yep. also have one for Generate Patrols LLC. Thing. Let's keep them all together because oh. I don't want them to get lost. Okay. Say that again. I have one for Generate Patrols the LLC for the uh, Community Development Block Grant, which okay. is four hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars. Okay. And there's the money's supposed to be in the bank account tomorrow. Okay. And we have ten days to get it to to them to them. Okay. Yep. So that's coming into us, and we have to disperse yeah. it out to them. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and we don't have the money yet, but we're required to turn it around in a certain amount of time. So, you know, we kind of need the board's approval in advance, or you'll need to have a special meeting. Brian, what was your first agenda item? I don't think I wrote it down fully. <laughs> Um, the grants and aid. Uh, we've got a, a, item number 10 on our agenda is also talking about the grants and aid program. So can we do it? I, I can just extend that, that a little bit and, and combine the two. Um, review and approve minutes from past meeting April 3rd. Move to approve. Motion and a second by Shane. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nice have it. Okay. Um, select board issues and concerns. Um, yeah, so the one thing I wanted to just bring up and raise, and I'm not sure how we want to approach it. Um, if you you saw, well, you saw my email, but um, in the minutes of the village trustee meeting, there is reference to the uh, trustees applying for funds for the public works facility. And I it just raises an issue for me because they are not the sole owners of that property is 50% owners. We are, and they're talking about, you know, level one and two. Brownfields assessments. Be clear about what your, can you state the whole statement so that the minutes reflect specifically what you're talking about? Um, okay. Um, so in the minutes of the village trustee meeting, they make reference to several grants and possible loans, et cetera, that they're looking for. One is uh, a federal, well, we used to call them earmarks. I don't know what they call them anymore. Um, through Welch's office and Sanders' office, um, they're looking at the possibility of an LCPC Brownfields grant for level one, two site assessment. Uh, and they, they also did talk about um, the possibility of possibly needing a loan or a bond <clears throat> if they don't have enough money to make up the total costs and grants, et cetera. My concern is that the town needs to be party to any of those discussions because we are 50% owner of the property and especially the Brownfields <laughs> assessment. Um, you know, that absolutely has to be, I mean, they can't, I don't think they can look at the public works garage in a silo in terms of a brownfields assessment. I think it has to be on the full 15 acre parcel and also the state of Vermont because the rail trail goes right through the property. Yeah. And we know that there has been site contamination on their portion of the siding. They're probably- I mean, They're uh, meaning the trustees? The, the they, they, they meaning the state of Vermont. State. Okay. Is yeah. probably also a party to any brownfields site discussion. So I don't know how we want to deal with that, whether we want to um, you know, notify the trustees formally as a board that we need to be part of those discussions um, as 50% owner mm -hmm. um, or how we want to do it. But I raised the issue. It's I think it's an important issue um, that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there is, especially the brownfield stuff, it, there is not only um, you know, the proper applicant aspect of it, but there's also the liability issue of it. Um, if 
you know, if it's not done right, uh, the town could end up being in a liability situation, uh, which I don't think we want to be in. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, did you want to add something? I was just going to throw in, I did receive a communication from Rob Moore, who is assisting the village <laughs> on this, uh, that he would like to have a formal meeting with, or an informal meeting with uh, some representative from the village and some representative from the town. Uh, and I had suggested- For what purpose? For this discussion about, you know, that it is jointly owned and that the town needs to be better informed about what's happening over there. Would it be too late to add this as a discussion item during the joint meeting? Not at all. Uh, we can easily add it to that. I think that's the better way to go. Um, well, it depends. When is there, have they submitted anything? N I'm not aware of that, but I'm really not. Okay. Not Rob, well informed about the process that the village is going through. Yeah. Okay. So I think that you're right. I think we do need to send something formally. Um, I'm happy to send an email to Ken and BJ, who are the chair and vice chair, copy Evan on it, um, stating why there is concern on our part. And if Rob, Rob has reached out to you, um, it feels like he should probably reach out to me. Okay. Uh, or you can facilitate like connecting everyone, that's fine. Or if he could reach out directly to me, either is fine. Uh, but if he's the point of contact, then he could reach out to me and we can figure out I would just as soon have you speak to it, frankly, Duncan, because I think you know it much better than I do. I don't think I know <laughs> that, that is definite, um, but I'd be happy to be there too. So um, if Rob could reach out, if everyone's okay with Duncan speaking knowledgeably on our behalf, um, I do think that either Evan or I should be there from the, but I'm happy to. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Duncan can speak on their behalf if they want to add it to the joint meeting agenda. They can request it. So I'll follow up by sending the concern email. I'll use the facts that you've already provided in that concern email. That will be one step. Second step, Brian, if you could add this to the joint meeting agenda, that would be great. We haven't actually ever talked to them about a joint meeting date. We haven't. Uh, they kind of told us it was on this date. I'm not sure if it is on that date. So we'll have to get into that a little bit later. Um, meaning I'm not sure our board has that date availability. But um, the... Peace with Rob, if he can join that joint meeting, I think that would probably be a beneficial addition. And for, for clarification on what Rob's <clears throat> role is this in this in the LCPC aspect of things, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, but I think LCPC was approached by the village, someone in the village to help assist them with the process of submitting something to Senator Welch's office. Um, and in that context, you know, if you look at the minutes, it refers to LCPC as the local administrator of Brownfields funds. Yeah. Um, so if it gets submitted as a Brownfields, it has to go through LCPC. Then they have a Brownfields committee. Um, you know, the powerhouse just got just got accepted as a, a Brownfields level two assessment, or is it level four? I can't remember. I think it's a level four because it was already remediation. Yeah. They'd already started the process right. when they tore it down and they need more money, basically. They need more money and they need to continue that process. So I think it's at the level four. Now. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Um so it's it's those sorts of um support services that LCPC is 
looking to provide the village as assistance. I believe that they're also uh, working with uh, Victoria, who's kind of LCPC's expert on the buildings and grounds grants that the state is providing. And she's approached us about coming to a future meeting to discuss the energy efficiency grants. Yeah, and that's, a, you know, I mean, that's another big issue is we should each know what each what each board is going to do because that I, again that is not that's not the village submits one thing the town submits one thing really those properties and parcels are one property and we we really should be thinking globally on the best way to apply for and use those funds. Um, in a in that agenda. We should change the discussion. We should probably have potential modifications to the MOU because if these conversations change what we have, we should just get it on there in case we need it. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'll make an update to the joint agenda, send it out to you and, and to Eric. Send out to all of you and, and to Eric also to send the trustees. Okay. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head what the date was, but that was included in the email you got from me last week. I want to say it was May 10th, but I don't. I was going to say the 6th. I have no idea. Yeah. There. I think you wanted it on the 6th, didn't you? Because it would be in advance of our regular board meeting or something. I think it's the 3rd. Oh, no. That was. That was that was the round table. I'm sorry. I, can't, I don't know. I yeah. can't remember things anymore. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not going to try to pretend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. No, if nobody's confident they remember it, then let's just not try and pretend. And... Right. Uh, okay. Any other issues or concerns from the board? Nope. Oh, okay. Treasurer's report. I sent out a um, budget schedule support. Okay. Eight, we are spent sixty three point oh five percent. And shortly I should be receiving the tour from the state for the uh, School tax for that. Sir, you should be sitting at the altar. A true up. A true up. up, yeah. They do that in, at the end of April. And that will push us closer to 75 ish, something like that. What will that push us to? That will either reduce or increase the revenue. Oh, it'll increase revenue. Yeah, okay. Person. Okay. So there, they will be. Uh, providing us a check for the uh, the difference between the the income sensitized portion. They've of, been doing that right along. They just finalized the final. Uh, okay, and, final. and that but that's what this is. Yeah, going to do. Okay. Yeah. So that'll put our revenue. That'll bump our revenue up quite a bit too. Revenue is pretty close, Rosemary. Well, we could all that money too, right? It's never happened, but it, yeah. it could. Okay. And we have received our final payment for the state aid for highways, which doesn't, we just got that today, so that's not reflected in this. Oh, okay. <clears throat> So our select board expense is pretty darn close to being capped. Mm -hmm. That's revenue. Are you looking at the 91%? We're looking at 91 for expense. Yeah. Yeah. Most of our major money has come in. I just um at the end of the year, I'll have it for the reserve funds. 
bring that money in. That'll be the major thing for that. And it looks like we we knew we were over budget on Tuesday Night Live. We talked about it during the budgeting process. Looks like we're also over budget on... Well, they'll be getting money in because they'll be sending out their be contribution offset. letters. Yeah. Okay. And the historical historical society is overspend, but probably over revenue too. Yes. Which we also talked about during budgeting. Oh. And for Tuesday Night Live, correct me if I'm wrong, Rosemary, but I don't think that we've drawn anything out of their reserve fund. No. Yeah. So they will be able to balance it for the end of the year. Okay. Or they should be able to. I don't actually know how much is in their reserve fund. But... And that was part of their budget proposal, right? It was yeah. takes in terms of Yeah, their reserve fund is for operating expenses because of the dates required that right. they it's usually typically they get all their money before July first and they spend it after July first. Right. Winter roads is really good. Sixty six mud is just incredible. I can't even believe how good the back roads are. Sure. I don't. Does this? Ref Did we get the bill for the salt yet? No. no. I'm going to over that when we, um, yeah. Oh, okay. So it won't look as nice. Got no. it. Didn't want to get your hopes up. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. What else do you have, Rosemary? Okay. Here's the current taxes. The date we're at eighty point seven nine percent. The fourth installment, and people are starting to start paying them now, which is due May 10th. So about a month and a half to go. Well, a month and a half. And I have a liquor license for Vermont Maple Sugar Company. That's Butternut Mountain Farm Store. That's a class two license. Okay. Uh, you need a motion for that? Yes, please. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 What do you want to say? I just want to make the standard letter. Yes, sir. We are getting what you're going to say. Well, it needs to be said. You're right, Evan. We should. Always make that okay. part of the motion. I have it. Uh, Let us get one more thing. Go for it. Um, community bank. I have a resolution to open up an account there, which needs the board chair to sign. And it's just authorizing Susan and myself as to be authorized signers. Motion to uh, approve the bank. Resolution. Resolution with authorizing the chair to sign on behalf of the select board. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I, I'd like to just inquire a little bit about um, this is the account we're talking about that's a higher interest account, right, Rosemary? Yes, it's 3.75%. Uh, 3.75%. Um, I just, you know, less than 1%. So Beth, if you if you look at um, just Google Apple Savings Account, that's like four point seven five, and there are over five percent savings accounts right now floating around the world. I wonder if the board thinks we might want to look at some other possible places that where we could put this money and get another percent of savings. Anyone interested? And looking around a little more. Have you looked where else have you looked, Rosemary? This well, is trying to keep it, you know, you're trying to keep money local. Local, yeah. We don't have to put it all in one place. We can <clears throat> divvy it up. Who is this for? This is for um uh, community. Community, you know, it's right over here. And this is just to open the account. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So is there a minimum balance on the account? Hundred thousand, I believe. Do you have a, a dollar amount? If I remember correctly, the discussion was around 
try to move as much money as we felt we could into that to gain mm -hmm. higher interest rates. Do you have a sense of how much money, reserve funds, et cetera, that we could put in there? Well, you've committed some money of the upper money. Should that go into this account or leave that where it is? Some of that monthly money should be, I'm assuming we'll get a bill shortly. For I'm it. sure we're going to get a bill on that reasonably soon. I'd expect so. Um, so I wouldn't think we'd want to commit that. And, monthly, and um, money mm -hmm. dedicated for the CUD, I don't know when they want their money. Mumley is going to be a partial payment soon, I would think. I, I'm expecting. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Mark. I, I'm just very curious to the amount of money we generally have um, as a as kind of a rolling balance in the town. It seems to me that we could put a half a million dollars in these in a couple of accounts and still be pretty. Um, conservative and safe with our funding but i i trust rosemary's judgment to start with a hundred thousand but it seems like we ought to bump that up as as we feel more comfortable yeah that's the minimum balance we have to have that doesn't necessarily mean it's not what i'm going to put in there and if we put it if we put more than that minimum balance in we have to wait at this at the cd right so we'd have no. to wait Oh, it's not. No, we so you could get it out so pretty easily. Good. So we could move it. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Yes. This is the, the, this is just a savings account. Yeah. I would. I mean, we wouldn't want to do more than two hundred thousand. Say that again, Mark. We we certainly wouldn't want to do more than uh, um, the FDI insured amount in one account. But um, I would recommend we put a substantial amount of in this account. So the thing about this count specifically, I agree. Um, but he basically does, he wants to not go above the insured amount. Yeah. Um, okay. That sounds good. Congrats. It needs to be signed at the bottom. Mark, turn your video off, Mark. Do you think he sounds like this to himself? <laughs> Is he drinking a Coke at the same time? Having a pizza? Uh, We're losing you a little bit. It's where it says a test by one other officer. Yeah. Selling the boat. We do selling the boat. Oh, yeah. It's a good chance it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yeah. So that'd be fine. Then. To Mark's <laughs> point, I'm certainly willing to entertain the possibility of a vehicle that has higher interest yeah. rates. Um, yeah. Put it in here for the time being. And yeah. Keep looking around. That'll, I mean, if we're at least making 3.75 as opposed to less than 1%, that's that's positive stat. Yeah. I do like keeping things in the local area. Mm -hmm. That has value. And, and you know, I mean, that, that I agree with you in concept. When you're talking banks, I don't know if that really means that that money is staying here and working in the community. Yeah, it's not really interesting. <laughs> Probably right. Um, really quick. I think it depends on how much you want to, how much it costs us to keep it local. If it's tens of thousands of dollars of lost income, we should really ponder that. You're right. You're right. I have two questions since we're on uh, Rosemary, but it's a question on their invoices. One is on the Rabbit Tracks OMP projects. What is that? Anybody? We've that's got twelve hundred thirty dollars. That's on the uh two for approval tonight. Yeah. Oh, it's on the list. And we yeah. already paid it? No, we haven't paid it. It's just on the list to be to be paid. Well, okay. I'm gonna pay it as soon as he gets the work done, which is I think gonna be shortly. So if I sign this and we say no, you won't pay it. Right. Well, I need to hear. I like Did it. you care? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, okay, cool. Um, what else do you have, Rosemary? That's it. Okay. Did you need approval for when that grant comes in to send the money? Because it sounded like that was one of the orders that you sent. Okay, perfect. Okay. Next up, Jason. We uh, completed the backlog and we're finishing up the book as we speak. Uh, we started the spring slash summer maintenance. Uh, the crater's been out with the AOR break and the claw on the tractor. Uh, Uh, Jacob and David completed their OSHA 10. So that, and then uh, as far as upcoming tasks, uh, spring road maintenance, and uh, we talked about bringing the truck to do their spring PM and safety inspection. I have a quote in the, to the last packet of my packet for that. Uh, winter sand, we ended up using uh, only 195 tons, and salt, we used 298 tons. And uh, we got some up in the airmail training. Did I miss one? We had a welding training session tomorrow, and uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And then next Thursday, there's another training on roadside safety, and then May 15th, and go. You got you got all the others. Yeah. Okay. Second page of my work, uh Calder Cop and Burgess. It's it's a quote in here that Trevor will write the first book. And by bottom and ball from Johnson County Garden, they're giving us a structure off price. That's uh highlighted. I don't know. I think it showed the highlighted on some other guys' packet too, I believe. So the highlighted numbers are the two numbers that we're looking at. The 18 inch by 20 foot and the 24 inch by 20 foot. Those are the two culvert settings we primarily the most. So Johnson has the better price on both of those? Yeah, that's truck ship right to our yard over at the shop, and that price is actually. Right now, if you bought one down there and bought it, even for us, it would have buy it. It would be 975 for a 20 footer. So you're giving us a pretty good deal. Do they give us like a regular, like, do they have any, like, a 10% off for regular business? Like, we do a lot of business down there. I know that we get a discount in general on things like clothing, yeah. our safety stuff. Stuff like that. I don't know the exact percentage of the followers, but I do know that I believe I had ended the number last week when I got in. It came out to 853, something like that, for a 20 quarter bike in it. Finding all the drop So you think you are? Okay. Okay. Well, I know we're getting discounts by buying in bulk. Yeah, yeah. By buying bulk, yeah. 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 Okay. And the paving project update, and then we're talking about later in the week. Yeah, we're, I've got that in the uh, plan purchases. Right. But do you need approval on the inspections? Yeah, and the culverts. Uh, the culverts, I think, are within your purchase. Oh, no, they're not. Okay, so I got you. Okay. Because of the, the amount? Because of the total. Yeah. I, I, the total amount would be the, That's on your um, revised. Uh, one back to this. It's in here. Yeah. Okay. I've got 17,500. That was next year's. That's July 1st. Oh, okay. We are number. 
Fifteen even. So is what we need to make a motion on the uh, plan purchases, or will that cover will that cover these items? Uh, that won't cover allegiance. Let's do this. We're going to put allegiance on the plan purchases. So inspections through allegiance. Uh, inspections and uh, the spring PM. So they do, they go through and adjust the brakes. So for a commercial vehicle, it has to be a certified inspector to do that. For legal purposes. Okay. It's in a separate plan purchases are in a separate. Yeah, they are, but each one of these allegiance items is like one's 1373, one's 1338, one's a thousand. So yes. each one of those is Yeah, I got you. Don't worry, got it. More of them. Ready? Thirteen three point nine five. You're just gonna total it. Yeah. Should be up. Equals four thousand eight hundred and sixty five dollars. Thousand eight hundred sixty five dollars and thirty three cents. I would have to approve the plan purchases as amended with the inclusion of the. So there's more allegiance. on the plan purchases. You're including the baseball maintenance and oh, the paving. No, I would move to approve. Well, we haven't talked about that. I, I would move to approve the culverts and, and inspections uh, on the plan purchases. Um, what was the total you came up with for the inspections, inspections? in spring PM? 4865 $4, uh, let's do that again. I got a different number. Well, while they're adding again, you said the 17500 is what you're trying to purchase for culverts or 15000 15 is for this year's budget. The yeah. 17500 was for after the collector. We raised the culverts, right? We raised it to $17,000. Well, $500 is not a big difference. Um, I just wanted to be clear because it's like in here is seventeen thousand five hundred, but that's not what you're asking for. You're asking for fifteen thousand dollars in culverts. Yeah, that I there might have been a misunderstanding between me and Brian and the tech. <laughs> yeah. On my notes at work for seventeen five what well, I mean if we thought the budget for the culverts was gonna be for seventeen five. Gotcha. But you haven't spent any of I last year's that. culvert fund anyways, which was budgeted for fifteen thousand. And that's what they asked tonight is. Okay. Oh, the front and back. I missed one. Yeah. Well, I'm confused now that I'm looking at them. Oh, there's a front and back. Yeah. One of two, pick one of two, please. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't make sense. I'm going to have two page two of twos together. Two of the same. How many inspections should we have total? Four correct. Uh, it's because four. the first and second pages don't have the same yeah. second page. The first, the service estimate number is what lines up. What did you say? The service estimate number. Where? Like that. Oh six eight. This is one of two. You gotta go to the two or two. That's oh oh six eight. That's how they line up. I'm gonna use this last page. I don't love it, but it makes okay. sense. One, one, three, three point oh two. I will say, Jason, I love I love the sign on the powerhouse bridge. Times two. And the new graders doing a great job. Yeah, kudos to Mark, too. I mean, the graders, one thing, but the operators, 
also kind of important. Yeah, we had uh, <laughs> the, the new Packer Duncan is really nice from for the back roads with Matt that little car of mine. Are you finding that a, a pretty useful? It addition? is. Uh, like when we were out grading, we're having to use it every path. So it'd be cutting, he'd use it every path. And we spread and he'd use it so the packing a lot better and when it comes to the section of the road that's a little bit soft it's not letting the greater sink in as much it's just giving it locations and it's got that yeah. pressure with that so it's cool. keeping it up it's actually really, really well and we don't have spread too much stone or plant how are how are the sap trucks treating the roads jason there's certain spots that they have kind of affected a little bit but not generally too bad Here. Here's the thing that doesn't make sense. That's great. We have five of these sheets and three of these. Yeah. Uh, One of them appears to be the same number. 1338. It is, but it's it is referencing different trucks. It's two two separate trucks. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay, I'm going to try this all over again because that's an hour. Okay. Thought I was losing my mind for a second. Well, kind of was. No, wait, don't, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to paper again. That looks really nice. It doesn't have a total on it, does it? No, sometimes no. they get copied. It's a little weird. Okay. No, this is the same as the one we've got. So it's just in what they sent you was okay. uh, maybe not well organized. The PDFs. Okay, well now I have a third different number. This number I have is five thousand sixty-five dollars and seventy-seven cents. That's what I came up with. Must be right. I don't know. So I know I made a motion to approve those. Maybe we should just wait and approve all of the planned purchases as one. It's okay. We already have a motion. You made the motion. Did you have a second? I don't know if anybody. I don't know what your motion was anymore. Uh, well, it was to approve the the allegiance and the culvert purchase, but now I'm thinking of withdrawing my motion so that we just do all of the planned purchases as one approval. I don't remember if there was a second. Let's just Donna, was there a second? Good enough. Yeah, I got one more. Yeah. Can I, you have one more what? One more topic. Uh, not invoice. Can I see those papers you were going to hand me originally? I just want to check the numbers while you're talking. Go for it, Jason. The floor is yours. And then the last one on my sheet would say gravel and stone. And salt pile or stock pile. Yeah, that would be salt pile. Uh, gravel and stone, I would like to acquire 20,000 for upper branch, upper branch, and a section of the plot road. Wait, you, you want to what now? You want to acquire? Is that what you said? Yeah, I want and buy a okay. purchase. Buy, purchase twenty thousand dollars worth of same map planting from tomatoes or purchase. Yeah. Or the three would success. that be regular maintenance or mud abatement? That's regular maintenance. And is that within within your budget yeah. range? It's forty thousand. Forty thousand left. Forty thousand. Is that money well spent? Like, do we need it right now? 40,000 Some of the, yeah, some of those roads are showing ledge in places. Yeah, that's why. Uh, okay. Pretty hard to grade ledge. Yeah. That's fine. Just for, need to ask. Yeah, just for clarity, we budgeted 40,000 and we spent $209. There's a positive credit. I just don't want to spend money for the sake of spending money. That's all. That's all I'm asking. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to ask something I don't think we need. Yep. And the extended paving is out of the reserve, plus a little bit of 2024. And Pike has said that they're okay with that. Right. Okay. Are you with me, Duncan? Um, I'm looking for that bill. So, so you had an original bill. This, the bill that you had is new stuff. The one that I printed for you is the additional. Do it. No, I had it here somewhere. That's the one. Yeah. So this is. Uh, One hundred and one, and what did we? That's that's not spending the total amount, is no, it? It was one sixth total, but the one with the two other roads that that does the Blair Road, the the, the mill, you know, got the overlay, and that's an additional forty five or seven. I don't have that right in front. So there's one manhole that was always in the dirt section that was about eight inches down. So we're going to go another forty seven fifty feet, what it, what it was to now incorporate that manhole. That's on Sinclair? That's on Sinclair. 45 feet. Yeah, so and then with a mile, that's a full reclaim for the base and an overlay. And we're going a little bit farther on that to get past the residence driveway because there's always potholes right there. Because there's no way we can get down and incorporate the driveway with this transition that works. Do you feel like you got everything you wanted to do on the Clay Hill? project with the bid that we got last year? As far as uh, or everything that I was hoping to accomplish. Everything that you're hoping to accomplish. Everything I was hoping to accomplish and accomplish the section up in the middle of Clay Hill that's going to address the residence house and the runoff. I, yeah. Good. That's going to start way back at Pearl Creek Bridge. It's going to go up to the college University. They're taking an inch and a half. They're taking two inches out. We're going to do an overlay of an inch and a half back and shift the crown a little bit so the water stays on the right side. It's coming down the right side and not crossing over the center line and catching works the left side. Of it. That was the intent the last time we had it done. So just like keep keep your eye on them when they're doing. <laughs> um. So Rosemary, in terms of the budget, I think you said that they could give us a bill for some of this before July 1st and some of it after July 1st. That's, we kind of need to do that, right? They're not starting until the third week of May and that's still up in the air. So I think they can. They want to talk to them, they said it'd be fine. But I told them our situation that we have last year's money and this year's money that we worked waiting for the fiscal year or two, but we do this all the time. Okay. So that would be my only caveat on that. I think this is great. I think, you know, we potentially still have some money to spend. Yeah, so I, if they're going to be here anyway, is there anything else that you can think of that we should be doing and spend the whole thing? I, that gives me a little bit of heartburn. Don't sound like you don't can. Uh, but if we went with the extra sixty thousand, it just puts a lot of strain, I feel, on our tax anticipation reserve fund because it's right first day of fiscal year and we already have big bills coming up in the first quarter before we collect. Maybe Rosemary doesn't have such heartburn about it, but well you've got you've got sorry that in surplus already, right? Yeah. We're already gonna well, yeah, some of it can surplus, but the extra hundred thousand for next fiscal year, if we spend all the way up to that, we need to come up with a hundred thousand out of that tax anticipation reserve fund before we get taxpayers' money. I'd like to say that sixty thousand in case something happens throughout the year, we need to fix something before next fiscal year. I'd like to have some kind of buffer there. Is not I would like to see one, but it's not my decision. You know, as long as everybody realizes we're going to, if we do that, you're going to pay a mobilization charge. Uh, the only reason yeah, I'm saying it is 
you're you're getting more bang for the buck by yes. spending more on mm -hmm. one one charge than you are if you do two separate operations. But I'm ready to make a motion. We haven't talked about baseball baseball maintenance yet. So let's finish our <clears throat> land purchase discussion at this point. Um, okay, Brian, uh, baseball. Are we all set with highway? I was going to uh -uh. salt, but I can do it after you go. No, go for it. Go. The salt, we brought in uh, 15 loads. Salt, followed the reason we did so is salt. Pretty drastic jump last year, about six dollars a ton. Mm -hmm. So we've got 370 tons. Just over like 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. We got more than we use, but with the anticipation of the level of funding and the end sale save next year, and not have to raise it up. There's a salt break for the runoff. Yeah. So, uh, thank you. so you think thank you. The, the salt would be replenished in next year's budget? What might what me and Brian talked about, the goal was to get it like this, but we, we budgeted 38,000. We come in under that, but I've got more salt than we technically do because if next year's prices go up again, we can still stay within that budget and not go over what the people have by doing this every so we'll have carryover plus. Yeah. 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 Yep. Good plan. And if the the last comment on that, the, the salt, there was some concern about the salt melting, getting wet, and spoiling or running out of the salt shed, and that was not a problem last year. So yeah, we've been able to keep it over a year in good condition. Okay. Right. Um, for this is continuation. We only have baseball field maintenance left. Yep. So uh, we the baseball fields need some uh, maintenance. Uh, Greg Fatigate has done this for the town recreation a, a few times. He's pretty familiar with uh, kind of the needs and working at Old Mill Park. Um, so they'd like to use them again. And that's the cost for him, his services alone, and that's not the trail. Yeah. Okay. Can they look like equipment rental, trucking, services, and no material? And no material. Yes, I, I guess in the past, we've provided topsoil for him to use in Old Oak Park. Is that going to be a problem? No, so no. Uh, you can go over there and make them out. In the past, they bought topsoil and had, you know, separately and had trucked in. When we did some projects this year, we saved what we, when we oh, uh, didn't cut everything down. I like the way you talk, Jason. We're setting it aside down there so it's just to get out. So I told my students as soon as he gives me an ETA and I'm just going down, and they'll have it. Topsoil. Okay. Good. Any more questions on the baseball field? Yep. Hold on. Hold your horses. Okay. Nope. We have budget for it. So good. Okay. I think we've covered all our planned purchases. But wait, there's more. Yeah. No. Sorry. <laughs> Anyone want to go for it? I motion to approve. Ron uh, Paul. Sorry. I get a final number on the allegiance inspection again. It's five thousand sixty-five dollars and seventy-seven cents. Yeah. Okay. I'm open to approve plan preferences for one thousand two hundred thirty dollars for baseball field maintenance. Uh, one hundred one thousand ninety-nine nine hundred ninety-one dollars for extended paving. Wait, what was that number again? One hundred one nine nine. Yeah, 
uh, purchase of culverts up to fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Payment per uh, truck services at Allegiance for five thousand sixty five dollars and seventy seven cents, and gravel stockpiling for twenty thousand dollars. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. I would like to point out that the extended paving is a scenario that we discussed, a previous board discussed, about class three roads and the pavement extending to reduces access to ATVs by our current ordinance. Just pointing it out, we are extending the roads. That That's by right. by doing this additional they're, work, it would they're not allowed on paved three road segments, and we're extending them. I support it. I'm just pointing it out. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to point out that it is 7:25, so we failed our agenda times <laughs> already. Um, first up, guidance on committees seeking public work assistance. So I'll just give a little context here. Um, we often have, and Jason, you can feel free to add any color you'd like to my comments, but we have, <laughs> so you want to, is that what you're saying? Um, so we have lots of requests for public works, time, energy, equipment, materials, and rightfully so. We have committees for a reason who serve our town. Um, but there are often conflicts in expectations of what public works can and should be doing at any given point and um, timing of committee requests. Um, and it puts public works, I think, in an uncomfortable spot at times. Um, so this is, agenda item is about um, providing guidance, talking through what this board wishes to see when it comes to requests of public work time. Um, if we want to establish something, a process for committees, like how do we want to approach that, um, that rub of the need for assistance um, by the committees and volunteers and our public work um, other duties, like their primary duties. We wanna create some sort of a guideline for Jason and his crew, um, Jason probably most specifically, and do we want to do the same for others? What do you mean for others? Same for others. Same guidance for people who are requesting help. Um, gotcha. Um, specifically with highway resources? Yeah, specifically with public works resources. In theory, it could be applied to others for sure, but this is specifically about public works. Um, so are we having issues with our process right now, Beth? Is that really a concern? I think that historically, springtime, everybody wants to do things in the spring because um, they want to prepare for, or, you know, late winter, early spring, because they want to prepare for spring and summer and fall. Um, just my observation, by the way. Uh, but yeah, I think that there is often a, like, for example, in the fall, we had the conflict of we need to meet a grant deadline. And we need the public works crew to really focus their energy on completing the work so that we were completing grant work the work needed for the grant within the deadline. Um, but we also had the request of beautification to do, do some work. And I think the same can be true. It's not just beautification, obviously. I think the same can be true of any of our committees. Lots of committees want to do things. And we, like, from my perspective, we want to encourage people to do things. There is zero doubt in my mind, right? We want to encourage people to, to actively do things in our community. But at the same time, I think we have the obligation of protecting the public works crew um, so that they're not getting conflicting statements. Um, and we're supporting both our staff and our community 
and our guidance so that we don't allow for those conflicts or we can at least help reduce them. They're not gonna go away totally. Did you have any thoughts or suggestions on what that process should look like? Um, I don't have a clear don't vision. Spot. I don't have a clear vision of what it should look like, but <laughs> I do <clears throat> think that we should have something in place that talks about um, that talks about if it's more than a five minute call with Jason, for example, like it should probably come to the board. We should have some guidance on, yeah, go ahead and spend two hours on this request or um, can your crew be available for a day? I think that that belongs to us. They're spending money in different ways by spending their time on these things. Um, and I think there could be like liability things too that we should really be considering depending on what the request is. Um, so for me personally, I think that there definitely needs to be some judgment. I think it does need to be like, are you just on the phone with Jason for five or 10 minutes? You know, sometimes I'm on the phone with Jason for five or 10 minutes, but I, I don't feel like I'm disrupting his day. We're just clarifying something. Um, can others have that same type of conversation? And when's it too much? Jason, do you have anything you want to add? Not so much I want to add. I just want to add two, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, public works, I don't have a problem with anything really. I was reaching out to, uh, to get more clarity on certain things because um, many years notifications to me. We were under the same interpretation of how things were going, but back this fall when we were hanging the lights and stuff on the bridge and everything, and then there were some issues that arose that put me in an uncomfortable position with some phone calls, texts, and emails about the thing that I I felt that it would have been nicer if I could have had a more clear cut plan. And then recently with uh, the tree, the arbitorium, I was doing some work like I thought I was supposed to about <laughs> the water line and didn't find out that the board didn't want me doing as much. So I guess I more clear cut plan for what is expected or what the board is expecting me to have me and how much time to dedicate to it, I guess. That's the only thing I'm trying to get. I don't like that, telling people that I can't do something because of a reason I like to try to you know, follow things through. So I would just like a more you know, streamlined process, I guess. Right just something that the board supports, you know, once it's a unanimous decision that it's supported that it can go forward a little bit, I guess, without having so much. It's hard to describe. I guess. Yeah, Even it's conflict, it's, right? Yeah. Conflict isn't always bad. Yeah. Sometimes conflict's the perfect. Yep. 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 I hear what you're saying. It yeah. does beg a question. My former board had talked about it. I was planning on bringing it up in June. I would still like to have the timesheets redone. I had talked in the budget process about allocating hours for committees, and that was not supported, and that's fine. But we do owe it to the taxpayers to let them know. You know, I feel like it would more accurately represent our budget, only how many hours are spent at the skate park or at the town forest because of conservation. I'm just pulling stuff out of my hat here. Are you saying set a budget of committee hours? That what I, that's what I that's not what it was approved. That's what I had proposed. Um so what I had asked about and it would have to start at the beginning of the fiscal year is just keeping track of guys' time cards. You know, right now I don't know how many categories are on it. But if there was a Skate park, we just put eight hours next to skate park. It's not really, you don't need to write notes, you know, raked lawn or, or whatever you guys are doing, but anything like that. So, a whole turn of a year, we could really get a better representation of where hours are spent. 
But as far as if you want to call it guidance or if we want to do a policy, um, it's tricky because it's nice to have Jason partially involved in the planning process so that if there's big hurdles or whatever, he can point them out. But I don't think he should be calling around and pricing out water line or culverts or concrete or anything like that. The committees that want these projects done should champion that side of things in my mind. And when they want an allocation of hours, I think that should come to the board and it should be made clear, yeah, that's going to get in the way of grants or maybe it gets in the way of hauling sand for winter because it's already snowing and there was a busy summer and that didn't get done. But just the nature of the town, sometimes there needs to be prioritization. See, I think as long as, I, I like the idea of budgeting a certain number of hours. I, I want to have a better idea of what a good number would be. Um, but I think most of the committees might not have somebody who is really able to do the pricing of various things to the ability that Jason, like Jason does this every day. So if, you know, if there's a project coming up, it probably makes sense for him to, he might actually already have a number in mind. He might know somebody that we, you know, so I think it, it does make sense to have him involved for stuff like that as long as we can keep track of that and not have you know have that get out of hand have that um what i was going to say is it would be great for us to as a first step have a form for people to fill out when they want to request the use of public works for anything um and then that can kind of kickstart the process for us of how much public works time do we think this is going to need we can talk to Jason about that when the cases come up um, and then go from there on deciding what we want to authorize Jason to do and um, what, what is needed for the project. Um, but I think, you know, for something like the Arboretum, I think there is, you know, some longer term planning that needs to be done. But then there's, the, you know, like the like I said, the pricing, um, the, the figuring out where we're going to go from the water line to connect to the the arboretum so you know i think some of that requires jason at the table um and you know if, if we the board want them to do that then we need to authorize jason to be a part of it i think the thing for me is i don't want to micromanage jason like i think jason like has a good feel like you have a good feel for the things you need to get done and i feel like if somebody's going to get in the way of you or your team working too many hours or not spending your energy on the right thing. Like personally, I feel like that's for you to make the judgment call on. Um, you know, you're, you're a supervisor, you're a manager of many projects. Like personally, I feel like it's your thing. And if you need assistance with it, like you should have the support of the board to make decisions. That's just my feeling. But on the flip side of it, like setting expectations matters too. So that you should you should know that you have, you should know where the boundaries are for that support. Um, and if we, a good example actually is just tonight, we we're talking, we just approved the um, baseball fields and you talked about you had already pushed soil aside. Cool, like my reaction is that is awesome. That's perfect. Thinking ahead, not spending money on something we already have beautiful and then you have to screen it so like do you want us involved when you start moving that dirt around telling us that at some point i'm gonna have to screen this before it can be, be used like i don't know like i kind of feel like that's your thing yeah no what i was looking for is the more there comes times like when i do something for me and then there's backlash from board or board members or how it goes down like then it gets the committee fired up and then right then everybody's up. mad yeah. and you get in the middle yeah. I, I you know <laughs> it's hard because <clears throat> there's material that's needed so we, we utilize it 
it doesn't matter to me. If you had a magic wand, what would you have happen? <laughs> <laughs> but you see, that's part of the problem. But no, it's not part of the problem. Wait, let, wait. Okay, what's your real answer, though? <laughs> <laughs> if okay, well, let me let yeah. me rephrase my. And that's question. not realistic. If my if there's a magic wand and the board and you could have the board tell you whatever you want to hear, what would you want us to say to you about this situation? When it comes to committees, I think we can have um, I'm good with having the paper a little bit so they can you know we ten hours if you come the first time. So you want to protect yourself from backlash is what you're ultimately yeah. concerned yeah. with. Just ignore them. Until three o'clock in the morning when you get up, then you can respond. <laughs> Uh, okay, fair enough. Is there is there like a cap on your hours? If we were to set an hour, like the amount of time you spend on something before you come to the board, is there an idea of what that would be? Me and Brian were talking over like two, two three hours would be, you know, a week or something would be a normal thing, nothing, you know, that would be put the board at a worrisome time, but like if it's 10 or 15 hours, you know. It takes an hour just to get set up. Yeah. I mean, you can't you can't do much in two or three hours, really. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, when it comes to projects lining things up, I mean, you can get a lot of time in the price materials and, you know, doing the background work of before you probably can start. So okay. My Go primary ahead. concern is is also related to to Jason and the flow of work. Um, and if it, you know, to me, the red line is if it's going to interrupt, you know, if somebody wants something done now and that's going to interrupt a process that he's already involved in, I think you should have the authority to say, I can't do it now, but maybe I can do it next week. Does that work for you? Um, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about my primary concern is that, like you say, you don't want the flow of the required work of the highway department to be impacted. interrupted. Right. And I also feel pretty strongly that Jason's a supervisor and should have quite a bit of latitude in deciding whether he has time enough in his schedule to do it or not. And that that may require you to, you know, sometimes say no to somebody, you, you know, simply say, I don't have time to do it right now. Um, you know, you can go to the select board and ask them, and if they want to make me do something else, well, so be it. Um, so I don't know how we do a policy, but those would be sort of my concerns. Is, yep. And I, I'm not sure you can set a maximum number of hours that trips the, you know, the need that Jason's talking about. But a lot of it, I think, depends on the time of year and what he's got on his plate right yeah. now. But, I, I, have, I have to agree. I mean, I think that Jason can make these decisions by himself. I, it sort of feels like we're trying to search for a problem that doesn't exist. It seems like he he works well with uh, committees as it is. And I think that we we change them to public works. They're not town highway. They're public works. So I think that you know, we leave we leave it to, in his court, and um, we let he, him and the beautification committees and the rec committees work together. But yeah, just to further that, there's all these escalation points too. Like if you know that somebody doesn't like the response, you can always send them to me. You can send them to Brian. You can send them to. You, you know, know what? That, that what you guys are saying is great. So from here on out, so I can decide if I'm working on the project and I can work on it. Or, you know. I think that's where we're landing. Well, let's just get some. Could I? I just can I get some more clarification on what you were talking about with the um, the tree board situation? Because I mean, it sounds like you pursued a little bit of work along that, and 
then you got some backlash maybe from the board. I'm not sure. Um, could you just clarify that a little bit? Because it, it, it sounds like there is a problem. It, it sounds like there isn't, it, it's not something that we're, we're imagining. It sounds like there is an issue here. And if there's a small issue when it comes to the tree board, it could be a bigger issue somewhere else. And I want to make sure in the interest of good government that we're taking care of it now. Um, so I, I'd just like to hear more about that situation, if you could. Well, yeah, I was working on the project and then uh, was informed that I should not dedicate so much time on that set project. So, and that they were supposed to be dedicating more of their time in doing the project, but like you pointed out, they might not have the means or know how or where to price out the material is the best way. So uh, that's why I'm good at or good with leaving it up to me to do the work that needs to be done in a timely manner. It's fine. I, I I like trusting you and I do think that we can trust you. I also don't like putting you in a position of being caught between two sides. Um and so I'll just kind of say, I, I think there's there's two ways that we could go. We could go the informal way of trusting Jason and kind of saying to him, hey, if you think this crosses a threshold in your mind, come to us and we'll decide what the next steps are. Or we can go a more formal way of creating some type of form for people, for committees to submit that just says, here's what our project is, here's how much time we think it's going to take, this, that, and the other thing that then allows us to decide whether we pass that along to Jason or not. Um, I, I just don't like having Jason and, and his people caught in the middle. Yeah. Um, we are 20 minutes plus into Sorry. this conversation. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so I'm going to go uh, Kim, Jeff. Yeah. You're going to defer to Jeff. Okay. And then Sue really quickly. But if you keep, keep comments quick, that would be lovely. I was going to say that it would also be really helpful having done the personal bill to pass some expectations along to the committees. Yeah. If you're going to request help from public works, here's who's responsible for what. This is what you should expect. It's going to be in the form of discretion on the work that you can do because it can't interfere with the I think yeah. that would be greatly appreciated. Good advice. Perfect. And I, I wanted to say that I thought that um, Shane's idea of piece of paper that's submitted at the beginning is kind of a compromise with everything. It says what 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 the committee is asking for, exactly timeline, hours, basic. And that way Jason can look at it and say, yeah, that I don't want anything to do with this. And it won't, won't come back on him. It's like this isn't something I can do right now. And now the board can support him to be able to say, and he doesn't have to be the middle person. And, and once it's okay that the project is going through and there's issues, he can go back to the board. And so it's never a direct um, tax on him. I did. Yeah. I would point out that all our dealing with Jason and the tree board were exactly the way you described. He explained to us what he could do. He was happy to help. Uh, we were happy to work with him. He uh, told us. Responsibilities we had when we do it, we've done that straight when we do this working. And there was no problem until the issue came up with each other. So there was no problem. Okay. Okay. Um, so board, do we want to enact something? I I do, by the way, very much appreciate Jeff's comment about like let's set expectation with committees. I think you should formally set expectations with committees. I'd be happy to take a stab at an expectation document and bring it back to the board for our next meeting. Because I think that I want your buy-in on what our expectations of committees are. Um, Jason, yeah. I have one thing that I would like to add. The form, that's a, the form would be a great thing to know the hour that they're wanting and then what their project scope is and I can add to the form like the dollar amount of what the material costs. So then, it can be voted on, and then all rooms and I don't you know, have to go through the whole process. I think it would ease the process of the initial sticker shock when we do the project or the committees. 
if I can, maybe a form that uh, you fill out with the committee at the first meeting, yeah. you know, so that it might be a little bit hard for the committee or Jason to know in advance, but kind of sit down together for a few minutes and do it together. So again, that expectation setting, both people know what the ask actually is. I'm gonna make a not very kind comment, but I'm gonna make it anyway. We are not great at filling out forms and making people fill out forms. <laughs> so um, if we're going to do this, we actually need to, like Jason, you're gonna to have to hold everybody around you accountable. We're gonna to have to hold you accountable. And we're all going to have this circle of accountability for actually getting the form done, if that's where we land. I have a problem with the driveway reference. Brian, I'm talking about that. Okay, well, everyone around you is not great at this. Right. <laughs> if there's any way, yeah. Yeah. if there's anyone we can expect to fill out a form, it's people on our committees. I think you know. Right. So, well, you say that, but okay, the well, conservation committee is going to ask you. It's well, true. We have this is a perfect history. time to shoehorn, not shoehorn. <laughs> maybe that's not the right word, but conservation committee has been asking for a while to be apprised of any projects involved in the town and yeah. where if the board is going the route of when the committees request the public works we could just put the conservation commission's sheet on the back of it papers i do too um if we're going that route i'm not saying we're going that route i would still like to bring this back because i want to work with you on the information that you want in a form and I want to make sure we're on the same page with expectations and we can put those expectations right in a form and also email them out separately. Um, and also that confirmation confer, conservation committee form could go right into a form too. And when I say forms, I actually mean like a Google form or something of that nature. Yeah, but... Okay, um, moving on. Ready to move on? Ready to move on. Yeah, All right. All right. We're all good. Thank you for giving me. Uh, next up, we have the uh, noise waiver request. Uh, did, were we not Are ready? you done? Are you have more? No, I'm. Go for it. Yeah, yeah you're, you're all good. set. Right. Adios. Enjoy your night. Move to approve the noise waiver ordinance request for field days for July 21st, 2nd, and 3rd. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Okay. Lamoille Fibernet appointments. Uh, Lamoille Fibernet appointments. Uh, Charlotte Reber is stepping down from Lamoille Fibernet. Paul Warden is willing to take his her place as our voting representative. And Jeff Bickford has submitted a letter of interest for uh, the other alternate. I move to accept Charlotte Reber's resignation from Lamoille Fibernet and send her a thank you card. I uh, move to appoint Paul Warden as primary representative and Jeff Bickford as an alternative for the DD. All those, I mean, uh, second. I'll second that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, can we have discussion? Oh. Sure, we can discuss. Yeah. <laughs> so no. I'm, 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 I think Jeff would make a great alternate, but I, I wonder, does our policy, and making these appointments say that we're supposed to provide some sort of notice like from Port Forum or whatever for candidates. Uh, we did post a notice asking for representatives for the Loyal Fibernet. Excellent. Perfect. You ready to vote? I'm ready. Are you yeah. ready? I'm ready. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Okay. Good question. Uh, library installation updates. Showed up perfectly on time. No. We're only running like 40 minutes late. You know, <laughs> it was the perfect time. Okay, so the select board approved uh, the library to engage in the FP foam for $3,300. The estimate has drastically changed um, after a site inspection, now coming into 20000 plus. Library has room in their budget to accommodate the change, although it will delay some of the other planned maintenance. So the library has room in their budget to swallow $17,000. Not with no effect, but they can afford it. Where are they cutting? We have quite a substantial amount of donations that we do a checking account um, that we kind of save our rainy day fund. 
So this is the library trustees account. It's not a town fund. Who who has control over that checkbook? Who who has control over the checkbook that you're referring to? Our treasurer, Stacy Waterman. The trustees. It's it's a, a trustees, trustees checkbook. Here. That's why I was confused. You, you answered my question. Like it's not coming out of your operational budget. You have a fund that you put donations in or whatever. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's where. Yeah. Just so you know, the question isn't about whether or not you have the funds or why you have them. The question is more about the governance of funds, I think is what I'm reading into looks like. Yes. So and I'm going to put Rosemary on the spot. The, the library is a town entity, a town organization. Is it not true that the town treasurer is legally responsible for any and all funds? associated with a town entity, including such a separate checkbook? I think you're doing that as they have their own money in separate accounts, investment funds, which I have no control over. Yeah, that's... That's the question, no. The question is, if your town treasurer are you the one with authority over any town entity of which the library trustees and the library would fall? I think that's the question. Because they're not their own ent entity. They're under the town. I don't think they're their own ent entity in any way. I don't, I don't think they I are. I don't think they're in our federal ID number. Those accounts. Well, that's part of my concern and question, the question is, is should that they, be? they should be because you're legally responsible, I think, for any funds. What if somebody embezzled the funds from the checking account? Who's going to be on the hook for that? Are you going to be on the hook for that? I don't know. I'll bet you are. Yeah, but it's different. Uh, uh, it's uh, not about it's not about like how we spend money. About, yeah, it's, it's about, about where it's it is. About liability and ownership of, of and this is probably a separate question and yeah, discussion. Totally is, but it is important. Well, it is and it isn't. Um, I mean, the fact that you've got the money is great. The fact that someone is donating funds to the Johnson Library, are they donating it? to a town entity. I mean, the library is a town entity, right, wrong, or otherwise. Um, it just is. Um, so we, a number of years ago, we went through a process where uh, there were a bunch of little uh, little entities um, that had their own separate checking accounts. And all of those funds were brought in to Rosemary as town treasurer. Um, and I think one of the things that you were told at the time was anything, all, all money should have the same feral ID number um, in, in your... Uh, There's a page in there for a trustee. Yeah. I'll be in the library. I was, money. Yeah, I was just looking. Yeah. All their investment funds. This conversation changed a lot. But it didn't because his point is like, how do we give approval over a fund that we don't oversee? Yeah. And if we, don't we own have the building. access to the... We own the building. I have an oddball question that I guess applies. So if somebody were to write or bequeath funds, let's say, um, to the library, that would not go to Rosemary. You would put that in this account. Somebody made a donation. Is that how this account is funded? It's partly donations and it's partly where we keep rent, rent that we received. And okay. some of these questions, I know that I'm answering you very properly. I'm not sure. The administration. Yeah, if if it's grant money, it should go through the town. The administration costs for those grants, are those paid for by the town or this fund? Um, he's she's not going to know the answer to that because yeah. she's not the treasurer. 
Um, so yeah, I, I know. I think, I feel like we need to have this as an, I think that Rosemary probably needs to do some digging and research. We need to have this as a close follower, follow-up agenda item. Um, and invite Stacy because I think we'll need her help with all of this. Too. I know Joey and Ben did a lot of the work on it. Do you do you mind Rosemary just reaching out to both Stacy and Joanne and like and doing a little digging on your side just to make sure that on the treasury side you're good and then we can talk about it in a town meeting and invite them. Maybe they can or already have set up a 501c3, which is friends of the library or right. something like that. If that's the case, then that is right. a, a plausible way to do that. Yeah, and those endowment funds may be that way. They may the endowment that way. funds may, yeah. I'm, and I'm not worried about the endowment funds because those were, and crepes, those were made back when it was the Oread Library Committee or the Oread Club. Um, I'm more concerned about a, a separate checkbook floating around out there that has apparently somewhere around 17,000 bucks in it or more um that so you're you would be more comfortable if they formed it like the historic society there the historical society has a 501c3 yeah, right. private yeah taxpayers don't yes. see what's in it right we're not responsible for anything yes and when if i as an individual citizen or the bequest or a donation to the 501c3 I could get a letter from the 501c3 saying you've made this donation, it's tax deductible, right. you can claim this on your IRS tax form. And Joanne did Joanne set up the 501c3 for the historical society. Maybe maybe she's already done this for the yeah, library. I, I, I don't know. So maybe what if we did this? What if we basically um since the building is a town building? What if we support the spending of those funds as part of a motion and the actual fund management side Well, Rosemary has a follow-up anyway. Um, and we can like, if the town has any authority in that fund management side, that could be part of our motion. Well, I had a separate question on sure. the spending piece sure. in, in you had in your, um, form on the grant that you're applying for i thought i saw in the grant insulation yeah. so if you spend the money now and do that it's yeah. not a reimbursable grant expense i'm unsure of that i'm um, pretty sure it's not <laughs> it very rarely is yeah. like very very rarely so if you got a possibility of getting the grant i'd rather have the grant pay for it than and then you guys would have that amount of money available for the other things that you're thinking about mm -hmm. doing. Yeah, I guess with the grant, um, the list of things that we um, that we put in the application, so it's kind of a lofty list, and it would the reality of getting this done now is a lot better than if we waited um they are willing the um installation company is willing to come immediately after we get approval from the board which as you all know like that's not a reality for a lot of maintenance right now this is something that we kind of want to check off of our list and get done it's really important um seventy five hundred dollars of it would be coming from maintenance um capital expenses in our budget and then twelve thousand would be coming from the grants and the um donations. I guess I'm sort of talking between the conversations here with the agenda items, but so but to Duncan's point, if yeah. you apply for a grant and you've already paid for the work, they're not going to reimburse what you've already paid for the work as part of the grant fund. Right. Right. So you would have enough in that list that you use for your grant application to do the other things that that grant money could go toward. So you wouldn't actually be spending your grant money on insulation at all. Is that what but you're saying? But you'd be spending 100% of your annual budget for the... What's their annual budget? 
well, their annual budget plus their capital. Right. On but they'd the be spending all of their this okay. year's allocation, which hasn't even begun yet. Well, it, it'll be 2023. It's yeah, we're we're not we're almost done the year. We so two months left, three months left. Let me be clear on that. Are you proposing to spend money from the current fiscal year budget or the upcoming fiscal year budget? Okay. And that's coming out of capital building expense, yes. Okay, and good. Nothing, so nothing's been spent. They haven't spent yet. anything of the seventy-five hundred dollars that was allowed or in the budget. Jasmine, do you know when the when you would hear back on? I know you had to send in a letter of interest that had your priorities. Yeah, I don't think hear back until late this year, early twenty twenty-four. And then I'm not sure. This, this big grant is kind of unfolding in real time. And so the timeline is rather wonky at the moment. So we we don't really have answers around that. We just know that the application is due this fall. That's all that we know. Yeah. Okay. When we last talked about insulation, the library wanted to have some money to purchase windows to install next year. So the library board of trustees is fine with understanding if seventy five hundred dollars from the town budget is applied that they're not going to be able to purchase any windows. Right, the windows are now in this grant. Okay. Yeah, I saw them. I just yeah. you know yeah. unfolding in real time. We're walking and following. Yeah, we're thinking along the lines of having some spend any money yet for building maintenance this year. This is something that we could easily check off our list before July 1, and it would be a significant, um, a significant gain. Floor, right. right. So, yeah. Okay. Is there anything, any other questions on the, on the insulation? Uh, So almost $13,000 you have in that other account. I'll make a motion. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> this really should have been under plan purchases. Let's go. I motion to approve the library spending up to not in excess of $7,500 on spray foam insulation. And that the library underneath another fund will come up with the remaining $12,972 to fulfill the $20,472 contract or proposal. Can you give me those numbers again? The, the, the Town will pay $7,500. Total contract cost is $22,472 or $20,472. So the library is going to come up with $12,972 of non town funds. As I understand it, the funds is the tricky word for me. I feel like a friendly amendment I would propose is that you say thirty five hundred from the budget from their current year budget, and not use the word other funds from other non town because other non town is we don't know if those accounts belong to the town or not. That means they'd have to come back and get approval to use the funds that they already have. Sure. Non-budgeted funds. So it wasn't seconded, but non-budgeted. I guess that's a friendly, not seconded. Yeah, it's a <laughs> amendment. Which I, I I think I heard you say something about say what you said again. I was basically trying to say that if he says non-town funds for that remaining balance that restricts their ability to use that other account that is out there if in fact the town has ownership by having ownership of library and i don't think we should do that so Can my proposal that? was that the first half of that 7500 is out of our operating budget, budget. and the remainder um, is approved like we give the blessing on the remainder as long as it doesn't come out of their operating budget yeah, that's exactly how I worded it. Uh, Let's move okay. on. Okay. <laughs> Donna, sorry, we made your life really difficult. 
<laughs> I thought I was pretty clear, but I guess I wasn't. <laughs> you made me clear. Second. What do you have, Donna? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it tell me it doesn't say scripture is rich. The library spending up to $7,500 from their current year operating budget and to also spend $12,972 as long as it doesn't come out of their operating budget. That's beautiful. Doc. Good enough. That's good to me. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nice. And Rosemary, you'll talk with Stacy about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was gonna do a whole bunch of other committee stuff, but we'll go to the library grant since we've already mostly talked about it. Um so the library is applying for a new grant. Yes. So uh, starting on packet page 11, uh, you've got the information on the grant that the uh, that the library is seeking. Um, So would we on this would we strike the attic wall insulation estimate of twenty thousand five hundred dollars? Seems like it. for the actual grant application. That would make sense to me. I think so. I mean, this is this is not the actual grant application, right. yeah. but yeah, you know, we can recommend like to them that, that you know they they be mindful of the fact that they're paying for that. Uh, in a way that is likely outside of the scope of approved for, uh, of allowable purchases for the grant. There's no matching funds. Uh, motion to carry on. Is there any ask of the town? No, uh, there is from me. If the grant's awarded, the grant funds will come through Rosemary. Please. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I believe we're going to get more clarification on what the Understood. situation is there. I, I would definitely be more comfortable if there is, like Duncan said, a friends of the library trustees take five hundred one c three set up just so that that's all done properly. But your your specific concern is that if a grant gets filed, it is in the name of the town of Johnson Library to be administered by. Well, the library board of trustees and Gene will administer it, but the funds right. will all funnel through the town treasurer. Yeah, I, I I agree with that conceptually, and you know just to know the. The, the village, I mean, the uh, the library trustees are a little bit different animal than other committees. They are they have a duly elected board of trustees, and by state statute, the unfortunate thing is they don't. There's two statutes: there's a municipal library and there's a public free library. Our library doesn't fall neatly into either category. It's kind of some of this and some of that. And I think that goes all the way back to the Oread Club, um, you know, at its at its inception. But in in both scenarios, basically, the library trustees are imbued with the authority to manage the affairs of the library. And in in general terms, that's been thought to be manage the budget, you know, manage the the library and the employees, um, all of that stuff. So I think that's properly in the hands of the library board of trustees. Okay. In so do we have a sec do we have a where do we land? Did you make a motion? I did. Yeah. Do we have a second? Did we? I don't know. I'll second it if okay. okay, we have a second. Uh, okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, have it. Okay. 
Thanks, Jasmine. Thank you. You're welcome Thank to you hang. Much. Um, next up, rail rail trail. Uh, rail trail purpose statement. Um, yep. Let's do rail trail purpose statement. All right. The purpose statement is one of your uh, <clears throat> helpful <clears throat> pages. Uh, this is a proposed. Uh, statement drafted to give the local rail trail uh, committee to give them a little bit more guidance on, on getting started. I think it's important that this get, if it gets acted on, that it gets um, into the minute so we can give um, yeah. Don a copy of the. I can give her my copy. Uh, I'll use it for our discussion and then. For the purposes of discussion, and by way of full disclosure, I authorized that I authored this. Um, but for purposes of discussion, I would move the Rail Trail Advisory Committee purpose statement. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? I do like the idea of a purpose statement anytime a new committee is formed. Yeah, I like it too. And I like the content of this statement. Yeah, I do too. Um, so if anyone wants to see what the statement is, there is a copy in front of Donna, one of those files, I believe. Uh, okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Next. Um, and this should know that uh, the date on the bottom here is reviewed and approved at their April 3rd meeting. That needs to be changed. Because obviously I today's not. I think that's already been fixed on the yeah, copy. Yeah, so. yeah Duncan, oh, Okay, I've got an old one. Sorry, right, Duncan passed out or Brian passed out. I, I yeah. passed it out last meeting. Yeah. yeah. Would we need a motion to have this included on the minutes? Nope. No, we already said it. Um. Okay. The full text of it will be included. Is my question. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a? Di can you send Don on the digital? Would you like it as a word? Would that be easier? Sure, just maybe. incorporate. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Do um, Lamoille County Planning Commission, Lamoille Valley Rail Trail Committee. Oh yeah, well that was me too adding that. So my suggestion would be that we ask our our uh, Rail Trail Advisory Committee to make a recommendation to the full board for an appointment to the LCPC. Rail Trail Advisory Committee at the regional level. That we have them. That we have yeah. them make a recommendation to yeah. us. Fully support that idea. I agree. Me too. Uh, who's going to contact their chair, or I guess all of they them? They don't have a chair, chair yet. I'm going to their, yeah, right. go to their first meeting, which is on Wednesday, and I'll and you're okay with kick this? them off. Okay. And yep. And then um, one or two representation. I Well, I think LCPC was asking for one. Yeah. I've, Believe that's correct. So I read was one. Okay. So ask for one and an alternate. Was it one and an alternate? Or you're just trying to make things difficult. We can yes. turn that I name of it. I think we should, just in case. Um, but okay, cool. Uh, bringing back to Duncan's point earlier, um, should we post asking for a volunteer to serve in this position in general, or do you want to limit it to? I would like to see what the committee members say. Okay. And if they don't, if they would prefer to open it up, I think that if we have somebody outside of the committee, that does not make sense to me personally. I, I think it's very unlikely that that would be the case, but yeah, our policy does it will post for appointments. It does. It does say that. I'm comfortable with the committee handling it. I, I have no problem with putting it out on front porch forum. I mean, we, the appointment is up to us. We can, I mean, if we get somebody who's not on the committee, we don't have to appoint them. I can already hear one conversation I'll have if we don't do that. So I think we should. Well, all okay, right, post it. Bye. Let's move on. I hope you think for yourself you. and not for others. But, you know, <laughs> that would be my statement there. Well, uh, yeah. On behalf of others, so yeah. oh, collectively, yes. Uh, can we go on to the next one? No, no. Okay, yeah. Next up is Green Mountain Byway. I got this 
email. Um, it was sent to Kyle actually, who forwarded it to the group, a group of people on Green Mountain Byway. Um, it looks like the Green Mountain Byway Committee is, I'm just gonna read it because I've honestly not been able to read the whole thing. Um, the Green Mountain Byway Committee is looking for a recruit, looking to recruit some dedicated members from each of our six towns that encompasses to create a stronger committee. We are presently re represented by a group that covers some of the towns and we need coverage from all of the towns. In 2019, the state of Vermont approved the corridor management plan to extend the byway from the original length of Waterbury to Stowe and continue it through Morseville, Hyde Park, Johnson, Cambridge, and continue back over the notch to Stowe. This is one of 10 byways in the state of Vermont um, and for all of, and for the good of all the towns, we're looking to promote it to its fullest extent. Um, it will bring visitors tax, do tax dollars. Um, with the completion of the rail trail, we would like to be able to partner up in the future uh, and cross promote. We have a website which showcases the town, uh, showcases each town, and we're working on adding additional events to the page, including a yearly event in each town and have a full map of the entire length created with outlook points and more. Website is Green Mountain High Rima and Byway VT.com. Our meetings on the second uh, at nine o'clock on the second Wednesday of the month. Some Zoom. Um, we're looking for members that feel they can contribute contribute at least three hours a month, including the uh, committee meeting for our community. If you know of anyone in Johnson, we'd like to hear from them. Um, Joey went to this meeting at one point. It looks like, um, and I think I also saw that. Casey went to their meeting and they actually have a blurb of write up from one of their meetings about Johnson, which I personally think we should expand on. Because I'm not, I think it covers a good chunk, but we could probably add some things. Um, What's so the ask? The ask is for a volunteer to join their committee. So I can give a little bit of history on this. Um, the uh, I was instrumental, uh, helpful in, in getting the byway extended out and including Johnson and the other towns. Uh, and I served on this committee for a few years, but a couple of years ago, I asked if we could find volunteers or somebody else to take over. Uh, Johnson Works was interested in doing that and has been, uh, Johnson Johnson's representative has been an appointment from Johnson Works for the last several years. Briefly, uh, it was me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. On Johnson Works? When I was on Johnson Works, I was serving on this committee as on their behalf. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On their so, behalf, on our behalf. Yeah. So we don't need to worry about it because Johnson Works already has it covered at this point if Joey's attending is what you're telling me? Yep. Okay. I, I can reach out to Joey and make sure that- He's already on it. Um, It's good, all good. I just yeah. wanted to make sure that we had that. Okay, that's cool. Um, I didn't know it existed, frankly. So I don't think I did. I did, I just oh, forgot. Well, check that one off the list. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Uh, number eight. Okay. Is LC, I don't know, I'll do that later. Beautification Committee Mini Grant Disbursement Approval. So Kyle reached out earlier and said she'd do, join by Zoom and she is there. Um, so the beautification, Patient committee needs a select board approval of the disbursements of payments from the local mini grants, of which we received an email. And it's in your packet on page 12. Um, are there any questions or concerns? Anything worth? Up. Is Dila who we are on the community oven committee? Because I, I see like two of the five applicants are actual town committees who have their own operating budgets already. And my understanding is there weren't enough applicants to fulfill the full amount that the beautification committee wanted to give out in mini grants. But I don't think pushing money to other town committees just doesn't sit right to me. 
at those committees, you know, uh, the Historic Society wants two hundred dollars for mulch and hanging flowers. I disagree with you personally, and I disagree because they're the committees that are listed are prominent committees, and if they're going to commit to planting and maintaining those flowers, why not? And clean up. It's not just flowers. Flowers and clean up. Why wouldn't we let the beautification? committee essentially um, use their budget for this purpose. If we're just giving $200 to the stores, I mean, why don't we just increase their budget? Because they might not use it for planting flowers. Because they're going to use it for other things. Yeah. They'll use it. They'll mm -hmm. use it. Yeah. They would. But not for uh, the beautification purposes. Wielding though. money from committee to committee just doesn't sit right. Okay. <laughs> it sits fine with me. So I know in the application or the description that the committee with regard to Diana Osborne's donor dollars for casting seeds in the town and covering graffiti on the rocks that the committee did not approve the casting of the seeds portion due to the low likelihood of the flowers growing from that process, but did approve $100 for the moss paint to cover the rocks at Prospect Rock with a natural covering. So it's actually saying $200 was the request, but they're approving $100. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I would move to accept the committee's recommendation with regard to uh, allocating the funds. Okay. Second. Good motion and discussion. Uh, second, any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. And I just have it. Uh, okay. Sorry. We don't have a unanimous decision, and we have a member attending oh, yeah, remotely. We have to do okay, oh, Mark, oh. how do you vote? <laughs> That's pretty obvious. I voted aye. Shane? Aye. Token? Aye. Evan? Nay. Really? It was you? <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised myself. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, by the way, I just want to say right up front before we lose folks on committees, thank you so much for answering these questions. I actually think this was really helpful mm -hmm. to see your responses to your questions. Um, so I agree with you for that. So hopeful I want to create more forms. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to call it a form. <laughs> it was a questionnaire. <laughs> questionnaire. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay, let's see what's up next. Uh, next, we've got the Conservation Commission's grant application and the Be the Change project. Um, Lois, if you want to fill us in on the grant application first. Right. The, the grant application is the um, Association of the Law Conservation Commission. And I believe you approved it previously, and this is to endorse it. So that's what really we're on. So yes. Yeah. Do you need a motion to endorse it or just a motion to approve it again? Uh, I think we needed to ratify it because we hadn't had it before. So let's just do it. Motion to ratify. Yep. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. 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 Okay. And then the be the change. Be the change. Yeah. That's the be the change grant. Uh, Denise, like this. Okay. Thank you, too. So, at no cost to the town, the Council Conservation Commission would like to create a native wildflower garden to support colonies. And we would like to work with this organization called Be the Change. Um, Be the Change provides the seeds which are costing the disc cattle, meaning equipment to labor. Um, so far, they have placed these pollinator support gardens in over 30 towns in Vermont. The closest one is High Park. There are two there. And they have plans right now to put these gardens in 
I hope I get this right, west forward, and then heading um, east from there, Essex and Jericho and Cambridge. So if we have approval, we would like to align the schedule to make things easier for them. Um, we spoke with the case the state park and we spoke with the dean and the rep and they're both in support. Um, so right. just to be clear, Denise, this is the town owned property on yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um yeah, so Casey Dean are in support. Um our building and science backs us up that native wildflower gardens are uh, well, first of all, they're really popular in education right now. So we feel like having at least one in the town of Johnson with support teachers, students, summer programs also very appealing to visitors, tourists, photographers. Um, artists, and most importantly, they support pollinators, which we really need for um, habitat and food production. And then, um, yeah, I just, I'll stop talking so you have any questions, and there are additional details in the paperwork. Move to approve. Second. Any there. discussion? All those in favor? Me. Aye. 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 Motion to approve applying for the grant or a motion to approve putting in the garden? Oh, good clarifying question. Applying for the grant is what I'm thinking. But we, do we also need to have a second motion for the usage of the property? Yes. Separate issues, though, right? The separate issues. Yeah. yeah. So I'll that. Okay. Well, if you get, I mean, we don't have to answer that question Until once they get, get approved for the grant, yeah. right? When is the grant? Yeah. Oh, you don't? Oh, they're just doing it. So, uh, oh, there's no grant involved? So if we're talking right now about just what I'm bringing up, but not what most people, yes. there we have no concerns financially, and be the change is going to mean everything. A few of us from the Conservation Commission would be on site when that work is done, but we're not going to be spending any money. We won't as a Conservation Commission and the town won't either. It's going to be covering about an acre of the current 1.8-ish acres. It's a field right across the street from uh, the state park, which I feel is mentioned by the state. I just wrote 10 years. I would, okay. oh, it's in your, your packet. I would move to approve uh, use of the town property for a uh, pollinator garden. In second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so let's think about the previous one. I think people were thinking about it as a motion to approve applying for a grant. It wasn't a motion to approve applying for the change program or participating in the change program. Yeah, our first motion is debunked because it wasn't real. That'd be lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to erase from history. Yeah. Do you want to be back, Denise? Or are they for our enjoyment? You're not going to do some that. Uh, okay. I just want to get one thing, but I'm not Did sure. Did you fill out a form there. with the Conservation Commission? It's on the form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a map on the stage which shows the back of the very parts. Yeah. If anyone's wondering. Did you see this? Yet? I like, did, yeah. Okay. And Casey is okay with that. Yes, yeah, she said that already. Yes. Yep. Okay, you it was today. We already approved it. Thank I you. I have some questions. Sure. Just came up. I was going to wait until later. Um, so, if the change asks us if we can park your just arrow overnight near that site, would we need to come back to you or who would we talk to? They're, what they're trying to do is avoid taking this equipment back. And they may not need us to, to do that, but okay. I would almost prefer they park here where there's light and monitoring. Don't park it in half light. Um, so <laughs> but what do you what, what were you gonna say, Duncan? I have no issue with them parking it down there, but I think you're right that it would be safer if it was parked up here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, great. Good question. Love it. Uh, letter of support for small businesses. So we've received two requests for the CRRP program. We've received one previously from Andrew Mink that the town approved, uh, but we have two additional ones for 
uh, GG Beach and BJ Putling um, for two local businesses. And these are on packet page uh, 15 and 16. If you want these back. Thank you. I would move to approve a letter, issuing a letter of support for both of those projects. I, I particularly like Gigi's um, description of, uh, you know, complementing the rail trail. I think that's a great, a great nexus. Um, and I really like it. My, my only comment was, should we, I, I, it seems to me now we're getting, we may get more of these requests and should we develop a stand like a standard form letter, which so is- So let's do one thing at a time. Because your first thing is you put a motion out there. I did, but but part of that part it. of that would be that the letter of support would be based on the template. standard template of, we support any grant application to this program, which meets their minimum criteria. And then we can use that you know, if we need it for other, if we other, have other applications. So, do you want to talk about the templated letter first before we have a motion that's kind of hanging? Do we have, do you have anything drawn up, drafted up I, for either of those? I do. I, I have yep. something that you might be able to use for other groups as well. Okay. Sure, bring it here. But I have to type mine. We apologize because yeah. my um, sure. friend not uh, have typos. Um, but Lydia got it my proof reader, so that would be fixed. Um, yeah. Thank you. And I did email you a copy if it is approved, but we have to change. Yeah. I apologize. Um, we don't have a standard form letter that exists for this. Um, we've we have a number of grant support letters. We, I rarely, like, unless it's a really unusual request or something, I rarely start from scratch when I'm writing them. Um, but I don't have a pre made template. Unless this is, I would, I would want to remain consistent with what we've done in the past, unless this is, you know, knocks all that out of the park, uh, which I'm sure it does, Gigi, but <laughs> yeah. uh, just in the interest of keeping things consistent with. Previous. Okay. Anybody else want to look at it? Want to look at it? I get what you're saying. And it's in that interest. I am going to motion to approve the grant application by B. Uh, BJ Putman and the grant application by GG Beach with the letter of support being boy, how do I word that one? Crafted I you had for, this for a generic letter of support for all other grants of this type by Duncan Hastings and Brian Story. Ah. Same. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to second. It's to approve them. Approve sending a letter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That it's to a... approve the grant and generate a generic letter of support. Is what I think I hear you. About. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't Maybe think they're they just can apply for this support. grant without a letter of support from. This the... grant is a little uh, unique. Is they don't need the town to, they're not behind, the town is not a party to the grant application. So they don't need our approval exactly to seek the grant. But one of the preconditions of the grant is that they need to have a letter. Then we'll support. So again, the town will not be a party to this. So the motion was to approve a letter of support, Donna, okay. with everything else after. Okay. Yeah. And Brian are going to put the standard letter, letter of support. Detailed letter of support to yeah. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Did you second? I couldn't remember. Uh, is there any in there. further discussion? Mark, you it. Yeah. Um, I, I just, um, 
I find these grants to private people and private businesses. I abstain from the one for the housing thing. And I'm going to abstain from these. I just, I don't see where these two grants particularly benefit the town um, in a way. I mean, it's just supporting the private business or private people. Uh, it just doesn't seem, I don't know. Can I say something? I think it's similar to um, supporting people in town who have uh, Airbnb, but if you're looking to uh, work towards uh, drawing rail trail users <clears throat> and that's also a private business, I realize that they're not asking for grant funds, um, but I also am attempting to help the rail trail groups feel welcome. And uh, I mean, I will do that regardless of this. This will help me um, make a proper welcoming place, for instance, as I mentioned, to store their bikes. Um, I'm not asking for funds to provide the bike rack. I already have a beautiful old um, iron rod rail, but for support helping to install it properly so that I can meet the expectation that their bikes will be safe. I'm not asking for security, it will be at my business. So I will be able to support them in a way that won't, we won't be able to offer at the rail trail so they can get into town and enjoy it. Mark, for, for what it's worth, I, I understand what you're saying. And I have somewhat of the same concern, which is why I suggested developing. I, I My own personal belief is that we shouldn't really be supporting any one particular business's proposal or business plan, but that we should, I'm, I'm okay with supporting or offering a letter of support for an individual business person. They can make their argument in their grant application. I don't think we need to say anything necessarily in our letter of support that indicates we support the business but I'm fine with supporting their application. Duncan, so, I don't see how that that's really different. If we're saying we support their support their letter of application, it's inherent that we're supporting what the application's for. Well, in my way to the town behind these two private businesses. I, and we do that all the time, but I just don't yeah. particularly see these as beneficial to the town. I, I understand where you're coming from, and I, I guess I am not vibrating in an entire sympathetic resonance. <laughs> as long as you don't have heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tend to be on the side of caution, too, and it's not actually about these two grants at all. It's more about private business. And right. I realize the <clears throat> hypocritical statement uh, that I'm making. But my concern is that I would pretty violently, violently oppose some private business. I'm quite sure if their mission is something that I don't value or strongly disvalue, if that's a word. Uh, devalue is not the right word, but you Somebody know, wants to uh, value. child pornography work. Uh, yeah, business. right. Yeah. Like, well, there's lots mm -hmm. of examples of things that I adamantly would not want to support, and my hesitation in supporting any small business in thinking about it carefully um, is: Are we putting ourselves in a position that isn't a great position? And I don't know how I feel about how you benefit the community. Uh, but I do think it's an important aspect to it. Um, and I can see that actually, honestly, from the from Gigi's submission, I can see the benefit to the community. Mm -hmm. I, I understand how that benefits things that we're actively trying to help. But do we put ourselves in an awkward position later? So... Uh, are you are you agreeing with Mark that we shouldn't support anything or that we should be cautious about how we do it? I think we should at the very least be cautious about what we, what, how we do it and what we choose to support and why we choose to support it. 
I mean, does it concern anybody that both GG and BJ are village trustees? Does that add a, a a concern to any to any of the other select board members? I mean, to me, it's the, you know a, a funny conflict of interest sort of thing, and puts us in an awkward place of not supporting village trustees in their personal endeavors. I. I hear what you're saying about optics as I look at it, um, and I thought long and hard about it, but if another small business came to this board asking for a support letter for the similar thing, uh, I would be supportive of sending that support letter. So optics-wise, yes, they're both applying for it, and yes, they are both village trustees, and it's for the same road, but if they weren't village trustees, would that bring you a level of ease well not in this case just because of the nature of the businesses for me, yeah for me it's not about that for me it's more about what precedent are we sending are we setting well i don't necessarily think that there's any i mean my to be clear my idea of a generic letter is not that we support every single application that comes through the door, it would be a generic letter if we approve. Yeah, the but then how are you justifying your approval or not? Could somebody argue that um, we're, we're being biased in any way or could somebody argue that um, we're not fairly approving because we don't like something like what what is the foundation in which we're approving what what are our guidelines well my personal guideline is as with everything related to the work that I do as a select board person is what I believe is in the best interest of the town of Johnson not what I believe personally um in, in in that context, I could easily side with Mark's approach that we shouldn't support any business uh, for these proposals because it's not, you know, if you get right down to it, it's beyond the purview of what we're supposed to be as select board people. Yeah. But on the other hand, if it's a requirement of the person applying for the grant, that they receive a letter of of uh, support. I I don't want to deprive someone from the ability to receive funding for Which something. They would be that, otherwise eligible. Yeah. That they'd otherwise be eligible for. So I think it puts us in an awkward position. The grant requirement of a letter of support. If, all things considered, if that wasn't a requirement, I'd be a hundred percent with Mark. I would say. It's not within the purview of the select board to be supporting anybody's private right. business. Right. Well, we do it. Well, we just did. Um, we you know, just we, we did, did earlier this meeting. Did we not? Well, I think there's probably a difference between a committee, which is a duly adopter appointed committee oh, of the well, town, versus... committees, yes, uh, but. At the beginning of the meeting, wasn't the discussion about Jenna's promise receiving grant funds that the town was going to get to them within 10 days? They're not really a town entity, right? No, but they were a sure. sub grantee of, you know, the town applied for the. I, I take So that's point. asking the town to, to I do take work point. I take and point. provide support, yes. not just but provide it's a for a community nonprofit that's in theory in the best interest of our community. It's different for me than it is a personal business, but that's neither here nor there. We have a motion on the table. Let's vote. Ready? What can we restate the motion? Oh God, boy, Donna. <clears throat> okay, so so the motion was to uh, approve setting a letter of support for BJ's and GGs. Grant applications with the letter of support intended to uh, generic. How to word that? You know, be a generic letter of support that we can use in the future. It's being formatted by yeah. Duncan and Brian. Yeah. <laughs> he just cares that he's, he's Duncan and Brian. Yeah. 
<laughs> specific names. I want those bold, underlined, yeah. italicized. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Yes, go. Okay. Shane? Aye. 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 Mark? No. So is it crafted by Duncan and Brian a joke or for real? No, he's for real. No, I Not think that's real. absolutely for real. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we have the Northern Borders Regional Commission infrastructure grants. Uh, and you have the current the current draft in your packet on starting on page 17. Um well, I say current, but I received some notes from Paul Warden today uh, that I thought were very useful and constructive. So does this this draft include? It does not include Paul's comments. Okay. Um, I expect I will probably include most, if not all, of Paul's comments. But uh, Did you have a chance to review it, Beth? I have it. I'm pulling it up right now. I have not had a chance to review it. Okay. But I will tell you I, shortly. I will I will say that I think Paul's um, suggested edits were were spot on, and I don't know if we need to make a record, uh, you know, a formal motion to incorporate those. But might as well. If we, I I will move that we incorporate um, Paul Warden's edits uh, and comments into the letter, which I I agree with Paul was otherwise. Um, uh, you know, a good uh, a good explanation. Second. And I, I assume you're still working on the budget. The budget is, is needs the most work, uh, and we need final data from Mumley Associates. Uh, and you anticipate getting that in time like that? And so Tyler says that he'll have it for me in time. But I, I don't have it today, so. Okay. Is everyone actually, so it's not just about me, I'm I'm facilitating a vote unless I need the tie break at this point. So um, Mark, have you had a chance to look? Do you have any concerns? And same question for Shane. Since we have a motion in a second on the floor, this is a discussion. We're talking about looking at Paul's updates. updates. Um, I'm looking at them again right now after a brief look earlier and everything that I have seen both times looks good to me. So um yeah, no, that I think that's fine by me. And I don't think my motion would preclude like if you look at it and you know have suggested Mark, edits as well. And I don't think my right. motion precludes yeah. any additional edits. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, there there will have to be additional edits on the budget section so yeah. it's not ready for publication even with false changes yeah. um the last thing i wanted to bring up about this uh especially for mark uh, because of some i know some of his views on arpa funds uh in what is in the budget section uh calls out for spending $300,000 of our remaining ARPA funds on this project. <clears throat> that brings us up the, the fund has a maximum limit of 80% federal funds. Uh, so that's why, that's why how I arrived at 300,000 is that brings us up to our maximum amount of a total of 800,000, 500 grant funds, 300 ARPA. Um, but I want to make sure that the board wasn't aware and comfortable of dedicating that use for ARPA funds. Um, you're not obligated exactly yet until the grant application is, you know, further along, but uh, <clears throat> if you're not okay with it now, we should have that discussion now before we make the application. The maximum of 80% is 300,000 for ARPA funds. Yeah. Unless we were submitting, what is the max of the, um, isn't this the grant where you can get more than a million dollars? Isn't this grant you can get upward to three? Upward to three, yes. Um, so in theory, we could spend more than 
a million dollars. In other words, more than 300,000 ARPA funds. I'm not saying that we should, but I'm just asking a question. Yes, that is true. A million dollars would, uh, based on prior budget estimates that were updated pretty recently in 2022, um, using those numbers, this would construct road and infrastructure up just past uh, where we had assigned in the, the engineering study had assigned uh, a, a double lot on the western side of the road and a single lot on the eastern side. So a million dollars would get us three saleable lots. So the, and again, I'm not proposing this is where we head, I'm just saying it out loud. So we could spend, we could, um, ask for $2.2 million. And that would be um, just north of 600,000. We've already spent 35 on monthly report. So in theory, that would get- 42. 42,000 on monthly? Oh, so it's I believe because we, we, we added the survey. Okay, so more like 2 million. And that would be um, 600,000 ARPA. Max. We, we've committed close to $95,000 of our funds already between the 50 and the <clears throat> yeah. uh, I, I believe so without having an accounting in front of me. Yeah. 50 and 42, 92. So, yeah, that's my recollection. As well. Yeah, and it might have been, it might have been more than 42 with Mummy's total. Okay. I sent out a spreadsheet a while ago about that. But basically, we've committed close to 100 of the ARPA funds already. Out of 630,000. Yep. So we're down to like 1.8 million. It's the max we could ask for 1.7, maybe ish. But I think you raise a good point is, is the million dollars what we should be targeting on this? Or should we? I mean, if Mumley comes back and says, you know, it's $2 million to get the infrastructure in for the entire park, and that means we can commit. You know, I, I I doubt anybody's going to want to commit more than three hundred thousand of ARPA funds, but um, I agree. If, if that, um, I agree. But it, it also <laughs> it, it, it does not preclude the possibility of going to the Vermont Bond Bank for a you know a twenty year bond note, which would be a very reasonable additional amount of money um, on the tax rate. So I, I, I guess a I guess we should think about that in terms of the final application is what, what are those numbers? Yes. Uh, we, we, I mean, that, that's a big part of the purpose of having the discussion tonight. But, uh, you know, the application, the letter of intent is due on Friday. Yeah. Uh, I do have a meeting with the Vermont State Representative from NBRC on Thursday, uh, but I wasn't able to schedule that in advance of this meeting. Um, I mean, personally, I'd rather get as much money as we possibly can out of the MBRC funding um, and make up the additional money. You know, clearly, we'd have to go for a bond vote and an informational meeting and all of that. And, you know, the, the taxpayers might say, no, we're not going to do that. And that would be the end of the that would be the end of the deal. But I'd. I, rather be optimistic and think we can get uh, you know if it's more than a million bucks we should put in for more than a million bucks we, sh we shouldn't just put in for a million because mm -hmm. it's a convenient number it, it's agree. a little bit more than just a convenient number there is a different threshold for grading criteria if it's over a million dollars uh, that the the grant application has in the past been limited to a million dollars and they've still kind of set that as the guideline that on infrastructure construction, you can go for more than a million dollars, right. but it's going to be a more difficult scoring criteria. But we've got a good project that aligns well with their goals. So. Okay, so you'll get numbers from Mumley yep. soon. Um,
Wednesday. So the due? first Friday? letter Friday. letter of intent is due Friday. Yep. Is due this Friday? Yes. Yeah. And and by the way, I think I've said this in the past. If we don't have a good letter of interest, we don't get to step two. You know, if they accept our letter of interest, we're invited to submit an application for the full grant. Um, yeah. So this is this is like our shot at this. Um, if our letter of interest is not accepted, we're we're basically done. So do we need more data? It, does this letter of interest have to include um, the amount of money we're willing to put up? Yes, it does. It does include it on page, it, yeah, page 18 at the bottom. Um, do I'm we need more data? My, I'm sitting in my car outside the spa, so I don't have my jacket. Okay. <laughs> they kicked do me out. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't buying anything? <laughs> no, I bought pizza and drinks and <laughs> they closed. It, it, Do we uh, need more data like data around our state of Vermont? Um, state of the Union speech talks about growing our economy quite often, bringing people to the state, those types of like um, economic items that an industrial park in theory will bring business, bring people. Like, I feel like we need something around, I get that you have it, it'll bring the job numbers in, but what about the need from a state perspective, not just a Johnson perspective? You know what I mean? Yeah. Will those help with the criteria? Yeah, that's my question. It's not listed. That specificity is not listed in the criteria, but it might make it a more compelling read anyway. You know, that if we if we can talk about how we're adding jobs and that this is going to affect a wider range than just Johnson. You're um, limited to what, three three pages on that narrative? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember off the top of my head exactly, but it's not it's not unlimited. Right. Um, the other thing about is about the central the centricity of Johnson in the state. But I think it's important. I think that's important. I think it's important that we're central to the cities in our state. There's no community that can talk about the fact that they're central to all of the virtually all of the northern cities that we have in Vermont. Now we're in command Yep. So something about corridor and being a central. And, you know, I'm thinking off the top of my head here, but we, we talk about this as an industrial park. In my mind, it's not so much an industrial park. It is as Thank it is. Thank you. I've been waiting for you to say that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I don't know. I don't know if it's worth saying this. In the, I mean, I think you sort of get to that a little bit by referencing the Yellowwood study, but I think it's important to sort of differentiate the concept here versus Morrisville. Um, in Morrisville, I think you know, it, light industrial park means um, you know uh, TCI or one of those things in Johnson, I think that means something different. I think it means supporting, um, you know, the growth of local businesses or entrepreneurs, um, value added markets, um, you know, those, those kinds of things. And I think it's just, a, it's when people think about the term industrial park, I think it brings to mind a certain thing. And I don't think that's what we're, talk about or want to promote here. Um, I can look at, I, nothing comes to mind exactly about a better way of fitting that in. I could change the references from light industrial park to business park. 
Yeah, or, or maybe even take a look at some of the wording in the Yellowwood study um, where they're kind of targeting, um, you know, part particular sectors of the economy. Okay. Um, I think, you know, I think that might might make it more attractive. Um, because anybody can have an industrial park yeah. if if you've got access to water and sewer. Um, <clears throat> so the ultimate question, I think, is uh, since this is due on the twenty third, twenty first, uh, twenty first, um, how do we uh, are we are we comfortable? I mean, you're you're saying that the million dollars is sort of a target that there's a slightly different threshold for review. It that. will be easier to get a million dollars than it will be to get over a million. In the application process, or will it will it filter out our letter? It is. Or you don't know. I don't know. It's probably the best answer for it. Um, they say that they will not be scoring your letter of intent by the criteria but they will be reviewing it for its alignment with the criteria. How that's if, different, if it's that's over a million? Either way. Either way. Either way. How that's not like scoring, I'm very unclear about. And will you remind me, how much of our ARPA money do we need to spend in or, or to commit in order to draw this million down? Strictly speaking, we could commit zero ARPA funds, but then we would have five hundred thousand dollars that we have to come up with somewhere else. In in to that question, Mark, if and the board hasn't had this discussion yet, but if the board were to decide to apply the ARPA funds towards the budget and end up with a five six hundred thousand dollars surplus which goes into a reserve fund then that is that 30 percent cap is not part of this criteria well, that, that that would be solely correct. town money as, as you know i i think this light industrial thing is a 20th century sinkhole that i'm not particularly supportive of spending our money on. Nice. Really surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, I'm supportive of building the infrastructure because it can be used for whatever. Um, and that's what this seeks to do. And yeah, for that reason, I, I think it's very, very good. Um, I am. When you say whatever, what do you mean? What do you mean, Shane? Can well, you if for housing, or are we committing ourselves to a business park if we fill out this grant and spend the money? I don't know that we are committing ourselves to anything unless we continue to maintain ownership of it and see whatever to the end. I, you know, I think if we build out the infrastructure and then decide what the next steps are, it could be the next steps are that we sell off what we have and then it's up to private developers to decide what they want to put there. Um, you know, if we build it so that it could be a light industrial park, then it could be that a light industrial park goes in there. But if we build it so that it could be a light industrial park, you could also put housing there. You could put commercial there. You know, you could do a lot of stuff there. Um, so I think building the infrastructure out, you know, and, and taking advantage of this grant to do so, makes a lot of sense no matter what ends up going there in the future. And you think it's a good use of town funds? I think it's a very good use of ARPA funds. Uh, if it were town funds, uh, you know, taxpayer funds, then I would be a different conversation entirely, but we have ARPA funds available. Um, for I, I look at them as one and the same. Okay, well, regardless of how you look at the funds, are we going to move forward with this letter? Where are we landing with the letter? Because that is the thing that has an immediate due date. I think it's great as it is. Um, I think the, the budget is realistic. It gets good work done, makes progress. 
Yeah, I like it. Or the, well, with Paul's additions incorporated. In yep. as we so the specific motion that's on the floor right now is to accept Paul's edits. Yeah. Um, it is. Into the. Uh, yeah, you made it. I seconded. Okay, let's vote on the on Paul's edits very specifically. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Now next steps in the letter. Um, Brian, I'm I'm not feeling super confident, honestly, in it being the seventeenth, and there are now four business days this between now and when this letter is due, and we don't have numbers. Doesn't make me feel super confident, personally. But that being said, um, do we want to keep the numbers as presented, um, given the Mumley report doesn't do anything drastically for the ask? Or do we want to, what do we want to do about that? Yeah, can I ask Brian for clarification on the million? Your your original thought was a, a relatively recent update on the million dollars would get us to lots one and two on the upper upper side of the park. So really, one, two, and three. one, two, and three. Yeah. One being the lot on the right as you're going up the hill. Yes, and then two and three, and those were. Those, the biggest lot was the next one in, right? I believe that's correct. The, the lots on the western side were relatively small. The uh, lot on the <clears throat> eastern side is significantly larger. So the question that begs for me is if we have to continue the road, the water, sewer and electric, can we get an estimate from, from Tyler what that additional cost would be? I, I expect so. I can ask him for a more detailed breakdown on that. I don't, like I said, I, I he's aware of what we're working on and where we're at in the application process. And, you know, he says he'll have it to work for us in time. But I mean, that begs the question, if you've told them that we want to get to lots one, two, and three, that's very different than building the infrastructure for all five, six lots. Tyler, the, I did not change the board's direction to Tyler. I have communicated to him that, you know, we might be breaking this up into parts, but I have not changed the board's direction. So his direction is still to provide a cost estimate for the, the whole thing. For the whole thing. So when we get that, it should in theory be the whole thing. Yes, I, I'm expecting it to be. So then that begs the question, if he comes in at a million and a half or two million. Right, do we want to go with a higher amount? Do we want to go with a higher number? Yeah. Or... yeah. <clears throat> Which we really don't know. We really don't. I mean, I applied, I, I took the original Ruggiano numbers from 2010 and applied a factor of 1.5 to it after backing out the land purchase because we own the land now. And I, you know, I was coming in something over a million, um, you know, then. So I believe that the numbers that we had from last year were about 1.6 million. I personally feel like if we don't put the higher number in, we might kick ourselves. But it, for me, it really depends on whether or not that letter is going to be filtered out. That's the thing. Like, if it means so we don't even get into the acceptance for applying, we shouldn't go above without a million. If if we're good and that number is not going to restrict us significantly right off the bat. Let's go with a higher number, but I don't like, I don't know how to know, find the answer to that. I'm having a meeting with the state coordinator. I can speak to her about that. Um, yeah, but I, my feeling on it is, uh, yeah, to, if the board's interested in the higher number and the board wants to 
finance that, we should go with the higher number. And then my other question is, um, if we go with a higher number, can we change it later during the application or does the letter need to match the application? As I understand it, there can be modifications made or requested. Um, like they might request us to make modifications to the letter, between the letter and the application. So them and, requesting us is very different than us wanting to change. Yes, it is. Um, Which is probably more likely. I think it's actually. <laughs> that's true, but. I think it's more well, likely yeah. that they submit changes to us, right. but they were. Well, I disagree. I fundamentally disagree because if we go with a higher number for our letter, I'm asking for the reason of if we go with a higher number for our letter, I don't want to be pinned down to that higher number. I want to be able to bump it down to 900,000 if that's what we want to go for in, a, in the application. But I want to know that. And if I don't know that, I'm actually more comfortable. Personally, I'm more comfortable going with a million dollars than I am going with a higher number. If we're going to be held to that higher number, and we're not going to have the option to change our letter. I, I'm having a meeting with the coordinator. I don't have a good answer for that question from the written information that's been provided. So let's go for the original. Seems to be where everybody's relatively comfortable. Can you that let's go for the original million. It seems to be where everybody's relatively comfortable. Yeah. You can also approve this pending my conversation. I mean, you can say that if we're allowed to change it later, then go with the higher number. And if we're not, go with the lower one. Or if we're unsure, go with the lower one. I like that. I mean, if we can get more, we should try to get more. I was going to ask you, this is kind of asking me to speculate more, but um, the fact that we've been up to this before and that it aligns with their plan, and I believe it's been identified, if not by them, but by others as a good project. Um, does all of that make it less likely for them to just toss our letter out? I'm speculating, like you said, I think it's unlikely that they're going to toss our letter out. I don't want to do that. I want to go, I, I am more comfortable with 100,000 because million, if we're sorry, allowed to million. change the number, we can change the number up. No, so I don't the, think so. For the application process. If if we put in a letter of, in, of interest for a million dollar project, I, I doubt that we could then right. make an application for anything more than a million bucks. I think it's a lot more likely they let us revise it down than revise upwards. That's that's my guess. Yeah. Is if we put in for a million five, they might approve us, but say we're only going to fund a million. That's them saying to us. Yes. If we are allowed to change our submission, there is no way they don't get projects that are greatly higher than once people get their numbers in order. I don't know. It depends on what they're, it, it, it totally depends on what the total grant amount, total dollar is amount for the submissions and how much those individual projects are. I mean, if they get 15 projects of, you know, $2 million, some of those are going to get one out. It, it dep I, I don't even know what the total amount is that they've got, but, you know, they're, they're starting out with a pool of money and a, a list of applications, and they've got to compare the pool of money that they've got to the total number of dollars that are being applied for. And they're going to make their decisions based on that. So they're not going to go up there and down. I get your point. Okay. I'll do whatever. 
I'll go with whatever. I would Where really go? like to go with what our need is rather than what we think we might get and take our chances. But um, I would be more than happy to have Brian meet with the coordinator on Thursday and communicate directly with you if you're willing to do that um, and make the final submission based on the input that we get on that. It's either that or have another meeting. Um, which I, I, I don't want to see you guys again this week. I mean, I'm willing to have another <laughs> meeting. I think it's important. Like that. That. No. But, you know, I, I don't want to put an extra burden on you either. So, um, yeah, I, I think we'll have an answer to these questions later this week. Okay. Uh, sure. I will agree in concept with that. So, where we're landing is trying to get $8 million, right? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, but, but it's getting late, so we should keep moving. But where we landed, what I think I heard we're landed on, Brian's going to get clarification on a whole bunch of questions. If we get to the point where we understand that we can make changes to the amount of the letter we're submitting, we need confirmation that, one, we could make changes to the amount downward, which is the most likely scenario. Two, that we could make changes to the amount upward, which is the least likely scenario. And if that scenario is not true, where we can make changes upward, we cannot make changes upward. We want to submit for, and we can make some ch changes downward. We would want to submit for a higher amount, a 1.6-ish maybe, uh, a higher amount. 10% inflation. <laughs> Yeah. A higher amount with the knowledge that we could work downward. If neither yeah. amount is flexible, then we're landing yeah. on the million. Is this yeah. what I'm hearing consensus? I like of? it. So yeah, neither of those is we're landing on the million. It, it, yeah, I, I guess it, can I add one thought to that to clarify yes. in my own mind? So if 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 after meeting with a coordinator, the coordinator says there ain't no way you're getting a million five. You really are better off to put in for a million. I'm good with that. Yep. Is that is that kind of where you're at? I agree. Okay. Sure. Yeah, my trust. Mark? I'm a, I'm a no vote all the way through on this. I don't want to spend another penny on this hole. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, Brian? I feel like I've got pretty clear direction on this. I've got a couple changes that I'm making to the letter, adding more information <clears throat> about uh, how the jobs affect more than just us. They affect state goals, um, adding <clears throat> more information about our location and our connectivity to neighboring towns, uh, especially cities, not towns, cities. Uh, neighboring cities and especially uh, the resorts that were well located yeah. for service to yeah. nearly all the resorts in the north. Um, and I'm adding more information about the uh, identified sectors in the Yellowwood study. And I'm well, changing it to business park instead of light industrial. Well, you're changing it to whatever the terminology in the Yellowwood study says, not necessarily business park. I'm Pretty sure the Yellowwood study also refers it to a light industrial park because that was the terminology that was being used at the time. It, it might even be light industrial slash commercial, but okay, um, okay, whatever, whatever you can think of that. Well, lends a diff a slightly different perspective to it than those are two different things. Rather than saying use the language in the Yellowwood study, and you're saying use uh, softer. Kind of more. No, I was marketable. about to ask you: Are you waiting for anything specifically? The end of that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> We're not quite there yet. <laughs> Light industrial slash commercial. Yeah, I like building. I like commercial better than industrial too. Industrial impl implies black smoke to me. Uh, yeah, and I really like industrial. Yeah, so which is, which is which is a different, you know, but it's yeah. 
Okay. Um, so I'm going to use the language that's in the Yellowwood study. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Unless you can soften it in some way, yeah. Okay. Um, I know that didn't clarify. Let's keep moving. Are you waiting for anything, Lois, in particular? Or are you going to be here? You're just hanging? I'm okay. here. I'm going to stay because I don't want to leave for a moment. Oh, that's oh. very kind. You may never leave. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so project management offer from LCPC for road maintenance grants in aid program. Okay. So the grants in aid program um, used to be housed out of, I think it was ANR, but it's now moved to a VTRANS program. Uh, it's virtually unchanged. It's for uh, improving our compliance with the municipal road general permit. Uh, it is pretty permissive on what kind of projects it can go for, but they have to be uh, for improvements and mitigation on uh, hydrologically connected road segments. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the kind of brief over overview of the program altogether. In the past, before it was VTRANS, it was administered at the county level by the County Planning Commission. So this was a super easy grant for us. We just said, yes, we'll take your money. They gave us money. We didn't have to do any, like the administration for this was virtually no. Um, but it, that changed when it changed management over to VTRANS. LCPC is still willing to serve as our grant management for this. Um, it was helpful. You know, Rob uh, is uh, was really helpful about project design, what was compatible. Um, you know, this is where this program is where Jason learned a lot of those skills that he has now on using the iPad and uh, GIS and uh, satellite data about identifying things. It's a good project. Rob was a good assistant for it. Um, so I think there's value in continuing to use LCPC services for management here. Just for clarity, um, yep. because of the meeting at the beginning, you were talking about an intent letter of support with the grants and aid. That's different than. That's the next agenda item. I don't that's the next item. Okay. So this is them. This is LCPC assisting with the management of the grant for the current year. The one we've already been awarded. And is there, it's it's a $1,500 fee to them, is that? Is that, that can come the, out of the grant itself. That, that's a, uh, that's an eligible expense that can come out of the grant. Well, given the fact that we're about to lose our town administrator and we don't have anybody lined up yet. I I guess I would support the concept of having LCPC administer this. Yeah. Is that a motion? Do we need to be a uh, that's a motion. All second. All right. Any other discussion? Uh are you guys authorizing the chair or Brian to sign it? Uh, I typically sign. Okay. I think I've signed the last couple of these, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like. My motion specifically is a authorizing Beth to sign. As long as it's clear. And I will second that addition. Beauty. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. All right, uh, next part is a letter of intent to participate in the program for fiscal year 24. This doesn't cost us anything, it's just saying we- It doesn't cost us anything, it doesn't obligate us to any particular project, it's they need to, the way this program is funded, they collect, uh, they, they're given a pot of money and they distribute it amongst everybody who's going to use it. Motion to submit letter of intent for grants and aid fiscal year 2024. Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. 
Okay, next up. Next up, uh, request for proposals for the public private partnership stormwater construction project. So this is our project that we're working on with the Vermont Electric Co-op for the three acre rule, um, which will um, improve the storm. They, they need to improve their stormwater handling capacity at their site. Uh, they are overbuilding it uh, so that it can handle uh, additional storm water that we might need out of our construction for the uh, light industrial commercial business park across the street. And they did grant us the easement uh, to book onto it. So we are guaranteed access. Um, they drafted this RFP, but I believe that it meets all of our Uh, Brian, all of our needs. Remind me what the funding source for this is going to be. Uh, it's an ARPA related grant uh, from for Vermont Electric. Yeah. Well, it's actually the town is the grantee. Uh, the this is another partnership grant for a private business. Is there any local match from us? Or? No. no. Is there admin expenses and who's going to administer it? Admin expenses are an eligible, are an eligible cost. For it. So we will cost. be receiving some funds for management. So we'll be managing it as... Yes. So are you looking for a motion to circulate this RFP? Yes. I'll make a motion to circulate the RFP. Do you have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Um, aye. aye. All those opposed and abstain. I'll abstain. Uh, Mark, how do you vote? <laughs> abstain. Shane? Aye. Abstain. I, heard, I heard you. You're good, Mark. I heard you. Duncan is aye. aye and Evan is aye. We just, because it's uh, everyone is not unanimous. We have to do a roll call with you on the phone. Okay, tax map maintenance. All right. Uh, next up is a uh, contract renewal with Cartographic Associates Inc. Our, uh, they do our GIF mapping uh, for us and host all of our data online. Are we still happy with our services? We are. Uh, the We've had a couple of wrinkles with them, uh, but that's really been, not really been their fault that we had some uh, internal management about making sure that we're getting updates to them in a timely fashion. So it's not a wrinkle with them at all? We had any actual wrinkles with them? No, I, I yeah. Rosemary, you agree? And their price has, an, has not increased for this coming year. I would move uh, to approve the tax plant maintenance contract with uh, 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 cartographic. cartographic Associates. Second. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nice. Have it. Okay. Uh, next up, the appointment of the E911 coordinator. I've been serving as our E911 coordinator, um, but the Justin Marsh is willing to serve in that role. Uh, Mason. Mason, thank you. Uh, I know a Justin Marsh, but that's not relevant at all. He's from Cambridge. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> yep. But no, uh, Justin Mason is willing to serve in that role. It makes a lot more sense to uh, assign that to the assessor uh, because right now fine. I go out, fine. measure, assign the 911 address, and then give that to the assessor. And then the assessor goes back and does their part, uh, their assessor part of uh, that. Um, 
Oh. It really makes a lot of sense to just assign the whole thing to the. And he's willing to do it. Yep. I would move to appoint um, Justin Mason as the town's E911 coordinator. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. Did everyone vote on that? Like everyone did vote on that, maybe. On which this just now the one we just did. All right, everybody did. Next up, we have the adoption of the updated local emergency management plan. This is an annual, uh, an annual task for us. You received it as part of your supplements. Um, All right, there's another signed document. There's three now that you have. Did you do the one for the CUD? Nope. Don't have it. Yeah, you do. Sure. <clears throat> um, oh, okay. I'll, I'll get you the CUD. It's in there. Uh, so the local emergency management plan, uh, Duncan had pointed out uh, one change, and I agree with him and recommend it on page eight. So of the additional packet, you have eight pages on page eight. The town health officer is listed as Tracy Myers, but I do believe that we changed that to Dean Lott. Um, so that is one alteration yep. um another thing about this local manage emergency management plan um i have spoke with eric osgood he needs to sign it as the uh ics trained personnel for the year um and the select board chair needs to sign it upon board approval but also uh the state vermont emergency management is very interested in getting all this one entered into web EOC, the Ron Ron emergency, or emergency management center. <clears throat> um, with the select board's wishes, I would like to do that. They recommend it in terms for ease of LCPC and the EM and the EMD, future EMD. Um, and if they're willing to do that, I would be more than happy to work with the EM on entering it online. I will move to adopt the local emergency plan with the uh, change relative to health officer uh, that Evan mentioned and to authorize him to work with Vermont Emergency Management to get this uh, in a web-based format. And I'd second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, aye. You don't have to abstain. Uh, That's what I was thinking. Ayes have it. Okay. okay. Unanimous. Next up, uh, the a little update on the Economic Development Roundtable. Um, we have a proposed meeting date um, and the uh, final vote. Well, we have a proposed meeting date and facilitation lined up for it. Um, of the date is May 10th at 10 a.m. Um, the Vermont Council on Rural Development is willing to facilitate the meeting for us at no charge. Um, they're going to be coming out for it. They're pretty excited about the 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 conversation and the opportunity. We're excited they're coming. <laughs> Do we need a motion to accept? That date? Uh, I don't know that I need a motion, um, but I do want to make sure that at least a couple board members will be able to attend. I think it will. It was May 10th, right? May 10th at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Can I throw a spirit? I am. Not the table. Um, to make that work. I will do my best to be there. I should. I don't see any conflict at the moment. At 9 a.m. said? 10. 
10 a.m. 10 a.m. I can be there. And I will, I'll try to be there also. Okay, great. I can be there. Good. I'll warn it as a presentation. Yeah, you know, a select board meeting. So it sounds like we'll have a quorum, um, but that'll be perfect. Yeah. How long should we have? Watch? Two and a half hours is mm -hmm. what the they want to target. Um, yep. Okay. Um, while we're on the subject of Vermont Council and Rural Development, I don't know if this has been done recently or not. Rosemary probably knows the answer, but at, at one point in time, especially after they did the community visit, we were um, making a contribution of $75 annually to it Vermont. It hasn't been done the past several years. Okay. Yeah. I, I would like to make a motion that we make a contribution to Vermont Council on the Rural Development in the amount of $75. I know that they are, I know this is not a any nexus to them conducting this meeting, but I think they're a good organization that is deserving of. Our select board expenses, we're getting awful close to fully spent. But well, also, if I remember correctly, that actually, there was a little was line a item that was donation, which I, which if, if nobody's gotten that, that, that's a line item that exists in our current budget. Yep. It, it does. I, if I remember right, that was the year our budget, budget got voted down, that that was one of the things we eliminated. But, um, I don't think anybody seconded. Did did. I saw you you did? Okay. Yep. okay. Well, that's not in second. But right. I just second, third, fourth, fifth. Okay, okay. so every second did good. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Thanks for that second. We, we got back on time. No, we did Yes, we did. Okay, next. Next up is uh, the continuing continuing discussions about the town administrators. So there was one item that we didn't get um, from my added. I was going to bring this up after this one. Okay. What one? Does it begin with Marvin? Yeah. Okay. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> I did think they were missing something. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. So to so continuing town admin search. You want me to update the board on what I've heard? That'd be lovely. Yeah, the please. Last meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I did check with Municipal Resource Inc, um, which is one of the two firms that we've actually received proposals from. They list uh, services, um, you know, providing interim services as part of their portfolio. Um, I had a very interesting conversation with a guy whose name is Alan Gould. Uh, he, the first thing he asked was, um, what's the size of the community? You have fire, police, emergency management, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, I, this was no prompting on my part. He said, well, that's a three day a week job. <laughs> I said, okay. Um, you, you know, we were doing that, uh, that way at one point in time. Um, and then he said, we could probably, I'm thinking if you had some basic administrative services that the town could provide, we could pro probably provide an interim person at 16 hours a week. It would have to be remote there in New Hampshire. Um, so, you know, there would be no in-office in presence at all. Everything would be remote. I had a conversation with Rosemary um, and she feels that there is the capacity of existing staff to do some basic administrative functions to augment the 16 hours, which I think would keep us afloat. You know, I wouldn't expect that we're gonna implement any new big initiatives, but I think it could get the work done until we could actually have a search. So that was one conversation. I reached out to two, uh, retired or nearly retiring managers. Um, one, um, I'm not going to name their names in the public meeting because you know, they are both currently working. Um, one basically said um, she's retiring in September and would be interested after that. 
And I'm thinking that isn't really going to work for our um, needs. The other um, said he's retiring at the end of this coming week, I believe, um, expressed quite a bit of interest and said he'd get back to me. Um, and I asked him about, I asked both of these individuals about two things. One, would they have any interest in serving in, in an interim capacity? And two, would they have any interest in conducting an actual search um, for a replacement? Um, the one basically said, September is realized I could do anything and she wasn't interested in conducting a search. Um, and the other said he might be interested in either and is supposed to get back to me, but hasn't yet. So at this point, we have two proposals. We have a proposal from VLCT. We have a proposal from um, Municipal Resource Inc. Um, I don't... Oh, the other... The other fascinating piece of conversation with Alan Gould from Municipal Resources Inc. was I told him that we were contemplating um, hiring a separate community economic development coordinator, whatever you want to call that position. Um, and he, again, without any prompting for me, said, well, why wouldn't you hire just one person who could be your community economic development person and your um, town administrator. And I said, well, you know, our initial thought was two separate people, you know, the, the community economic development person might have a better, bigger focus or a more of a focus on economic development issues. And he said, you could hire somebody or in your ad, you could add, try and attract somebody that had a strong background in economic and community development. Or concentration in. A concentration in, yeah. And he, his comment was, I look at hundreds of resumes a year um, for these positions. And he said, I think you could find somebody who has a strong background and could do both jobs. And I said, well, you know, that was what we had in our prior job description but we just changed the job description and stripped that out and made it, you know, made it two separate positions. And he said, well, you know, do what you want. Um, it's, it's your, it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. But he said, one thing that you could do would be to advertise for a town administrator with a strong concentration in community and economic development. And if you get a good resume and you get a good candidate, you could say, we'd like you to do community and economic development. So I understand that's kind of going diametrically opposed from what we had talked about at our last board meeting, but I wanted to let you know what what his, you know, what his thoughts were. Well, that is somebody who does this for a living. <clears throat> and I honestly don't know how I feel about it one way or the other. I think there's advantages and disadvantages to both options. Remind me, VLCT, because we not offer insurance services. Right. Right. And their proposal was significantly more money. It was between twelve and 15000 I did have a conversation with uh, Abby Friedman and um, the former executive director of the league, um, Steve Jeffries. Super guy, and, and he would be doing the search. Um, Steve is just, he's top notch. I can't say enough good things about him. I did ask both of them, could, if we did more of what you've got listed in your total search package, could we reduce the cost? And they both said, yes, you could. Um, but Steve also said the last search they did was for, I think, the town of Manchester. And it ended up costing close to the lower number of their estimate when all was said and done. Um, the estimate for Municipal Resource Inc. was uh, 5000 but he said that their typical search recently has been closer to 4000 
that's a that's sort of an abbreviated, you know, it's not the full package. It's not sending out a letter to each and every candidate. Right. Um, it's working through. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know that we need, I mean, it's up to you guys. If we want to pull the trigger on it tonight, we can. If you want to wait until the next meeting, I might have some more information back from, you know, other managers, whether or not they're interested in conducting a search or not. Um, I'm honestly not real optimistic that I'm going to get a lot of interest in a retired manager conducting a, a search. Mm -hmm. um, I just assume go with the contract service. I like I feel like the guaranteed time and commitment to finding us someone is important. The other thing that Alan Gould said, which I think has value, um, if if we went with municipal resource, the lower the lower priced one, he said, if if we provided you interim services, by the way, it's eighty five dollars an hour for interim services. Um, he said, if we provided that, my strong recommendation to you would be to involve your interim in the hiring and review process because they would have a much better idea of the day-to-day -day activities and, you know, because they were working as your interim, mm -hmm. uh, which makes a certain amount of sense to me, but. Yeah. What were you gonna say? You were gonna say a minute ago. You yes. are, I'm confident you are, yes. <laughs> How much lead time do they need to provide interim services? To provide interim services? To provide them. Um, you call them today, they can do it Monday. They need two months, they need six months. No, it's it's a lot quicker than, I don't know that it would be tomorrow if we called them today, but it would be certainly within the week. They, they you know, he, he said they have people on staff who are, uh, very capable and competent, and he could provide services quickly. He said in some cases they get the emergency phone call and they have to have somebody there the next day and they make every effort to do that. I would like both quotes in the next meeting, the agenda being to approve spending funds. Because of how it was worn. Action item I, would, I would like to execute a contract right now. But I would like proposals in the next agenda the packet. Right. The agenda item to act on. Yep. Okay. Let's do that then. Yep. As an and if you item. have more updates from some of the feelers you put out there, I may have. Great. Yep. You know, yep. somebody comes back and says that we want to be in our own for $65 now. Yep. Or something that you're talking to. My only ask for you guys as homework would be to give some thought to what Alan said about, you know, one person versus two persons. And, you know, mm -hmm. when you have strong feelings one way or the other about that, advantages or disadvantages. And, um, I think that we should also take a stab at that, even if, whether or not it's combined into the TA position, I think we should take a stab at the job description around expectations for economic development. Mm -hmm. And do a little cleanup like we did with the TA. Yep, we can certainly do. I'll, I'll work with you on that. I think that was. If you guys are good with that, I think we were no to do that at our at our work session <clears throat> meeting. So yeah, unless they're no longer good with that, I think we're. I missed good. the last meeting, so oh, yeah, I'll yeah, take your word right. for it. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Do it. Okay. And I think the other thing I I will try and work on. I got a little busy last week. I I will try and run a few numbers on, you know, various cost scenarios and impacts on budgets of doing some of these options, you know, might inform our decision to some degree. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Next up, Marvin Awards. I think that Lois may stay for this conversation. <clears throat> That's what she was staying for. Well, looking on the agenda. Can, so can I make a comment about this? About what? About uh, nomination for Jim Marvin Awards. Sure. Last year, uh, the select board had decided 
forward nominations to the chair and work with the chair on nominations. And I believe we invited the public to we did. propose nominations to the chair of the board. Um, and it has nothing to do with not being transparent. Uh, it's it's an award that's great if it surprises somebody, uh, but you can't surprise them um, if the, dis the names meeting. are given. I do think it's important to nominate uh, people for them, but I would like to see the select board members send those requests to the chair, not the whole select board. And if you you're uncomfortable with that, we can discuss it right now. I don't um, care. Personally, I don't care. Well, the only, the only caveat that I have to that is that they're due, I think, April 23rd. It's pretty coming up pretty soon. So, so if, you're if gonna we're going to do that, we're going to get send it. a letter right. with it. <laughs> right. Send a little right I'm up. not reading the letter. Although you do agree with that. <laughs> if you've got a suggestion, you I don't, have to send a letter. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I don't have uh, bandwidth for a letter. Okay. So, yeah. Not this year. Last year was fun, but not this year. Um. Okay. Mark, did you catch all that? Remind me what this Yes, I did, was. but I'm fading fast. You're fading fast. Okay. We all are. And maybe you faster. It's a countywide award for community service, lifetime achievement for giving back, that kind of thing. And projects project. and projects that impact the community. Yeah, there are two. One's project design and one is um, uh, community service. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and yeah, if they have a really good candidate like Rosemary, they get a lifetime achievement award. Yes. Last year, very specifically. Well, what, uh, I can tell you from being pr present at those discussions, if they get more than one really good nomination for the community service award, and you know they've got a person that they really think is deserving of something like Rosemary, they give them a lifetime achievement award. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Wow. Inside knowledge. Um. So yeah, if you haven't sent it my way, but do plan to write a letter. <laughs> You have to send it with your nomination. Just plan to write a letter. Um, lastly, I'm going to add one more thing. We don't actually need to be in open meeting for this, but we're here, so why the hell not? The date proposed by the <clears throat> village trustees is May 3rd at 6 p.m. That is on a Wednesday. What? Nothing. May 3rd. I have to leave if we have if this is the date and the time i have to leave at 6 45. well may 3rd isn't a wednesday there is a wednesday may 3rd is, is a wednesday oh, yes it is you're right i'm looking at may it the fourth that's trust these are always going to shoot for a wednesday yeah. or what yeah. friday okay yeah. i think mostly wednesdays at this point but yep yep you're right so it, what time is it on? And I'll put it in my calendar. It's they're proposing 6 p.m. But we can counter. But the thing is that I have a commitment every Wednesday through the end of May at seven o'clock, mm. and I can't move it. Okay, so. then let's let let's change the date, Beth, because I think it's important you're there for the full meeting. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Okay. Um. I think we're probably to Evan's point not going to settle on a settle on a date at all. Do they? But two days from now. I, should oh, we wait. propose the? You said through the end of yeah. My bad. Sorry. What? No, Beth said she has. I can't do Wednesdays. Oh, Wednesday. Wednesday. every Wednesday. 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 Wednesday through every Wednesday. Wednesday. And BJ is going to say that he can only do Wednesdays. I'm quite sure. Um, but let me reach out and see. Actually, do you want to reach out and see? If there's yep. any other day of the week. I or can't earlier, things. or earlier, we could meet at five. Meet yeah, four. Good. What is what is the earliest we could meet? Could we meet at four? Yeah, I can. I can. I'll We're just tired. leave work early. It's fine. I'll leave work early too. I will reluctantly, by the way, I leave work early. So <laughs> we should negotiate for. I'll negotiate for another day, but it's good to know that another day. But yeah. The backup plan. Yeah. Okay. 
We had a meeting started and ended. Meeting adjourned at 10 o'clock. Is it really yeah. hot in here? Or is it man? It's, it's been hot. My goodness, it is. God, it's Holy like 85 degrees. Who's wasting propane around here? He hasn't even come on. It's uh, all your hot air. So, Mary. Hot I mean, you wouldn't have been able to hear if it had. That's, yeah. good. That's a good point, Rosemary. You yeah. never yeah. miss it in Ever. here. Whew. Yeah, we need to get some air attenuators on that thing. Openly. Well, we need to get some tall. Bye, Mark. Oh, he's gone. Because he's already gone. <laughs> he's already gone. <laughs>